Hello, everybody, and welcome to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. It's the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speedrun our way through popular or influential games released in a particular year. I am your host, Smooth Operative. So nice to have you with us tonight. We are headed back to the year 1993, and we have a jam-packed schedule for you tonight, including speedruns of Kirby's Adventure, Jurassic Park, Super Mario All-Stars, and last but not least, Link's Awakening. Whew. But don't forget, please, that Summer Games Done Quick is coming up very soon, this Sunday, June 26th to July 3rd, and prize submissions are open for that now, so you can go to gamesdonequick.com for more information. And before the big marathon, why not tweet at us at Games Done Quick and let us know what you are most excited about for this upcoming SGDQ. Um, I will tell you what I am most excited about right now, and that is a super awesome speedrun of Kirby's Adventure with our good friend Adam Ferrari and our new friend, the terrific Tracy. Uh, Adam, would you like to start off introduction? Greetings. This game, I'll tell you right now, this might be the craziest, like, tech-heavy speedrun I've ever done. <laughs> and, I've, and I've done speedruns, and you're going to see hopefully a lot of cool stuff, um, and Tracy who's my coach for this game. Tracy's terrific, just like their username says. I'm gonna explain it all to you, and uh, we're <laughs> nice. gonna have a great time together 100%ing this game. Uh, late NES release from 1993. Tracy, one you have any most... comments about uh, this wonderful game? Uh, this is one of the most beautiful NES games. Second largest. It's packed with uh, so much detail, so many levels, lots of pretty sprites. Very gorgeous. But um, are you ready to get down to it? I think we're ready. Yeah. You ready, Tippy? Yeah, Kirby's so friendly and welcoming with a little, hey, hello, let's get started. All right, <laughs> so I'll start counting down and around three seconds you reset. So five, okay. four. Oh, I don't, my live, I don't have my live split up. Let's oh, you gotta have start. the splits, of course. Gotta have live split or else I'll forget what to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Is, if it's so. important, sometimes runners keep their notes on their splits and it honestly helps out. All right. Good to go. Let's do it. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay. Good luck. In Kirby's Adventure, uh, the RNG it can be manipulated, so resetting before starting your game will get the Watto dues to form this pattern. So you can get them together as quick as possible. That was really good. We got Tornado. Um, this is 100% no major glitches. Now, no major glitches means that we aren't going to be credit warping, because that is possible in this game. Uh, it's an interesting category. And the other major glitch is that uh, we can keep some powers permanently, which sounds a bit odd to say, because in Kirby, you can pretty much have every power taken everywhere. Um, UFO in this game is super duper strong, um, and it gets manually removed after every stage, but you can keep that, and that pretty much breaks the game in another way, so none of that. Gonna have a lot of Tornado and a lot of other power variety, though, because 100% forces you to get a lot of switches by using certain powers. And speaking of powers, and, uh, do you have a favorite games? one? Me? Yeah. Oh, definitely UFO. Definitely you UFO? Can't, I mean, okay. Definitely. There's nothing that compares to my pretty pretty unidentified on a fly fly what do you what does it stand for <laughs> unidentified flying object <laughs> yeah <laughs> i forgot for a second there um on the bonus games you'll see me try to like end them as soon as possible i try to go for a perfect frame you can press a and b so i'll do a little flick uh, a lot of mario 64 runners do that like right here that was perfect. That was, so yeah, that was the lowest height. Yeah. It says push A, but you did in fact. <laughs> yeah. I pushed A and B. I'm way ahead of this game. It's funny that it counts Twice B the fun. for that. This game counts B as A inputs in some other scenarios as well. Like when you duck, you can slide with A or B. And when you use UFO, you can charge with A or B. And I find that interesting. But, um, yeah. Yeah, UFO is a really fun power. I like it a lot, too. Maybe sometime you'd like the uh, UFO category. Oh, I'm definitely running that. I want I want my UFO. <laughs> so, um, World 1 is kind of just really quick levels. Um, 
just flying through the tornado. It's funny because these first few levels are some of the most luck heavy. Uh, this game does have a lot of RNG. It's not usually like run killing. It mostly comes from the enemies that are spitting out uh, sparks, flames, and uh, gosh, I'm forgetting what the other power is. There's three really laggy ones, but um, yeah, this game has so many sprites and whatnot. Uh, a lot of people know it for lagging a lot. It especially gets laggy when those enemies do that, so they'll start to add up in seconds that they'll cost you throughout the run, so it can be a little obnoxious. Oh, it's Beam, right? <laughs> Beam is the other one, as I see him do that. Sometimes we can, like, get them out of the way, but other times we just kind of have to deal with it and watch a little bit of time and fall away. The most important thing is not getting hit, because every time you get hit, the power-up bounces away from you. And on top of it, to add insult to injury, the power-up causes lag when it's flying through the air. So usually, I'll, on average, I'll lose five to six seconds every single time that I lose, you know, I get hit. And that's if you're lucky. Like, five to six is like, okay, I got away with that one. It's, you know, damage list is like the dream run. Okay. And um, there goes Wispy, just kind of hitting him with the tornado, looking like a natural disaster. Um, yeah. So that's World 1. World 2 is also just a lot of uh, tornado. Um, Worlds 1 and 2 don't have any switches. Switches are what we will need to unlock more content to get to 100% completion. Um, but those don't begin until World 3, and they're scattered throughout the rest of the worlds. You're gonna see the switches pick up a lot, especially in World 6, um, where there's a stage, every single stage has a switch in it. Yeah. And a lot of them require a very specific power-up, so it makes this run a little bit, I don't wanna say dangerous, but like, you know, it's very important that I route it certain ways so I don't have to go back in the levels, and we're gonna make sure that we do our best to do that. Uh, so um, we'll go for Hammer, we'll go for UFO, it depends on the... Um, scenario, but uh, most of the time it's like a peg you gotta break, or or uh, like a block. So it's all good. You're gonna get you're gonna get to see it all. That's the good thing about 100. Yeah, percent There's a lot more power uh, variety. If you've ever seen a run of this game and just saw a lot of tornado and thought mm, we could be looking at more exciting things going on here, 100 percent definitely has that. Um, and yeah, World Six. I will is say, as a runner, it's not it, the, the tornado is a lot more exciting from like like. Because you have to route it very specifically. Um, so even the tornado parts I don't find boring, but you're yeah. right. That's why I did 100%, because um, beyond the, the tornado, you get so many abilities See, to... It's funny, before I learned this game, I thought tornado looked not very exciting, but it definitely has its fair share of nuances once you get to know that, and it becomes a lot more interesting then. But yeah, I, I wanted to mention on World 6, although we'll get there when we get there, uh, it definitely is the most... Uh, the most interesting world of this run because it changes entirely with the fact that there's just a switch in every level there. It can be really, really daunting. It's important to make sure that you're not getting hurt and losing your powers in that world. What did I just do there, Tracy? Did I break the game? Because um, that, that's not a major glitch, right? Yeah, so technically clipping through the floor and walls like that is not a major glitch. Um, it's funny, even though it lets us skip a few levels, uh, the way that works is interesting because we couldn't quite figure it out, like the exact logic behind it, but the method to it is that Kirby needs to have a power that isn't a weapon. As long as Kirby isn't holding a weapon and isn't a UFO, um, you can clip through a one tile gap in the floor by just crouching as you go over it. And that's what makes this game, I think, I think it's even cra it's more entertaining to play, especially as, than a Mario game even, because there's more power-ups, there's clips, I mean, there's credits warps that you do, not in this category, um, but it's, there's a, there's really a lot of tech, it's, um, like, if you're looking for a new speedrun to do, I would, I would recommend this over anything else that I've ever done. Yeah, this game kind of has a lot of everything. Um... And also, speaking of learning this game, I'd personally encourage it. It's, it can be a bit hard sometimes to keep able to run this, and I've wanted to make uh, really good guides and resources for this game. I kind of made some stuff before, but it could be better. 
However, I will say Adam learned very quickly and I personally helped him. I made like a lot of just simplified clips of things and just shared them. So honestly, if anybody wanted to try this out, I would probably just help you out too. I just like seeing more people do good at this game. And Adam's I've had a lot of really good coaches mm -hmm. uh, in speedrunning, but Tracy's been the best I've ever <laughs> had. Uh, I wanted to give up this game or pretty early on, but I'm really glad I didn't um, because it once you once you figure out once you figure it out, it's just it, it feels good to play. I think so. And uh, it feels good to get runs. Yeah. I'm usually a guy, you know I usually reset over anything, but with this game, I really try not to reset because I really want to do the entire run every single run if I can. Uh, and there's more. There are more categories too. Uh, this is just 100% my favorite category in the world. <laughs> Uh, oh, no. Minus the, minus that, minus that enemy there, okay, at least which you is got RNG. That, uh, something that's really <laughs> annoying. Um, if Kirby is next to their star and like another item, like the blocks, sometimes the game prioritizes the block over inhaling your star, so you have to be really close to it. So that was good. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just really passionate about this game as a whole. I like seeing people run it, so it's been really fun seeing you get better. Can I ask, this like, next how, oh, how go long ahead. The, um, Tracy, you'd been running this, and uh, I guess, like, to be able to teach Adam, like, well, how, wow. how much experience do you have? <laughs> I'm wondering. I started running this game in late 2018, and I ran it kind of on and off over the next couple of years, so... I, I want to say maybe I have, like, two full years of experience in it, but... Uh, yeah, I just, there's just so much nuance, so much to learn. Um, I, I just really liked seeing what more this game had, and I wanted to share my knowledge with other runners to uh, try to help them be successful. Adam, I didn't mean to, to cut you off either, but you're doing an amazing job so far. Oh, thank you. No, I was just going to say that we call that, uh, that the enemy is called Paint Roller, but, um, I call him Bob Ross. <laughs> And uh, that that whole fight was a very very happy little accident. Um, I got yeah. hit, which is which is not but, good. But no big deal with recovering. And also a little clip there just to get to the floor better. We were getting the first switch. And yeah, we, we kind of did just go straight through that boss. That kind of happens. Um, it's great. Like I said, this game has luck, but I said a lot of it was mostly from the enemies because the bosses in this game, they can be random, but generally with like Tornado or whatever power we have, we kind of just go through them regardless of their pattern. And Paint Roller actually always goes to the top right first every time anyway, so we can usually just kill them on that side. Ooh, but I got the, uh, yeah, that was isn't that subpixels precise I, or something? Honestly, I don't even know what's up with that room, but getting straight to the door can be really tricky to do because you have to bounce Tornado off the wall in just the right way. And here we are finally letting go of Tornado. Right. We're getting UFO, the other cool power we mentioned. Yay! So, yes. Adam's happy. <laughs> Sometimes in the it's nice. <laughs> sometimes in the normal route for this game, uh, we drop tornado and get UFO, and that's just because uh, there's a few mini bosses who do not play friendly with tornado. They will immediately grab you straight out of it and give you a hard time. Like Bugsy here, who is gone. Just two charged up stars. Yes. But we're leaving the level without UFO, and we're going to be getting back Tornado here. Uh, the older routes for this game used to just uh, take high jump here and then get Hammer later on. And the funny thing with Hammer is that it's actually really, really strong. It kills the boss of this world quicker than Tornado does, but it's slower because it's not a movement-based power. Also, nice mix. You've been doing really good Thank you. Things. Yeah, I in runs I, I'm starting to get used to them, but in a, in a race or a marathon setting, I'm really not used to it because I mean you have four frames for every mix, but and some of them are a little easier than others if they're like earlier on, or some of them you can just get an auto mix and just let it play out and you'll get it every time. Right. But I'm gonna go for some mixes in a little bit to um, where I have to like wait like a, almost a second, or it's and then it ends up being uh, pretty tricky to where if I miss it, it's okay. But um, like the one that's in four four. That one. If I miss yeah. that, there's a few mixes that's, you can't uh, try again. Yeah, it's a one try, and uh, depending on how I miss it, I could lose like ten seconds, or which isn't a huge deal for that's you know I have made a generous estimate, so I could go for all the mixes, but 
Uh, I forgot to actually mention even how mixes work. Some people sometimes ask, like, oh, is getting the power that you want, is that random? Uh, apparently in some Kirby games it can be, but in this one, not so much. Most of the Kirby games, uh, when you inhale two enemies with a power, uh, it'll start in a certain order. That order varies by the game, but in this game, I think it's the second enemy you inhale, um, your power will start on the one after that, and there's like a certain list of them. There's like 20 something powers and they all go in whatever order. So as long as you know where the starting point is, um, you can then practice the timing for stopping where you want to be at. And again, there's four frame uh, windows between each power, so it's not like it's frame perfect or anything, but it definitely takes some uh, getting used to. Oops. Okay. Tornado's awesome for uh, some mini bosses because you can touch them uh, with direct contact, and uh, with the tornado, it's just just tear straight. If you can them. control it, it's yeah, it's it's awesome for uh, bonkers. Especially uh, the the one with the with the hammer. Mm. Okay, this is the second level in this world that has uh, a switch. Also, yeah, okay, that was a smart play. That those bombs are kind of tricky when they go off because sometimes the second one uh, it can blow up the third one, but it will just barely be off screen when that happens, and it is really hard to get that to work consistently. Also, I'm trying to remember, <laughs> being a, a bit scatterbrained, there was something I was going to say. Oh, what you said earlier, I went to comment on, where you said it feels really rewarding to not reset in this game and finish it. Uh, that's kind of how I feel. Like This is the run for this can be 40 to 50 minutes long for this category, definitely near the 50 minutes area. Uh, for such a long and pretty game, it feels satisfying to just finish runs for me, and in 100%, you'll definitely have like a lot more mistakes overall, like there's just so much going on, but you can usually recover it and just still have a decent run, so I, I encourage no resets with this game. The only thing I don't encourage is doing that level, uh, <laughs> that last couple rooms the way I did it. That, that, that wasn't ideal, but um, what's it nice happens. about this game is, yeah, stuff happens and you can recover. Yeah, it's not that punishing if you make a mistake. Like, you'll, you'll lose time, but, you know, other games of the NES era, if you, like, have a movement mistake, you might die, you might lose your power, you might game over, have to restart the whole thing. But yeah, it's pretty easy to get your powers back in Kirby, and you don't have to worry about any of that. It's a very generous game. Another example of RNG there was, uh, it's a 50-50, like, which one of those, the sun or the moon goes first. Um, and I guess because if you guess right, you can, um, two-cycle the fight pretty easily like that, yeah. and it's super nice. It's funny, um, um uh, this game's remake, Nightmare in Dreamland, a lot of people still just guess on which of the two, but many people are fond of just waiting in the center and seeing, and even if you wait in the center in this game and use Tornado on them, you can still two-cycle them. It's just a little trickier, because the way that uh, Tornado like interacts with their hitboxes as they move around, uh, it, can, it can be a bit funny on if it's actually about to do damage or not, because they have a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of hit lag and like invulnerability for a moment, so it's just it, uh, it's just funny. It, it's hard to describe tornado things when the hitboxes just do weird stuff at times. I love that level because you get UFO and tornado right back. <laughs> yeah, it's very convenient for um, having twisters at the end and tornadoes in the middle, or and, and UFOs in the middle. I like the movement in this level personally, but that's just the way I do it. Um, we'll see Adam go through here and rise. There is a clip, couple ways. You, there's like a couple clips you could do in this room, but uh, I just don't do them because I, my PB doesn't need them yet. Really, I don't. I know the record doesn't do them either, so it's not. They're very hard to get. Um, so I, it's just one of those things, but. Anytime you see like a one block gap and everything's like level and on the same plane, that's a place you could do a clip. Yeah. Um, the uh, the actual, I, that's something honestly I wasn't sure if I was gonna mention. The previous room did have a one tile gap 
Uh, there's two ways you could approach that if you did it, but nobody goes for it because there's not really like any room to get a running start for it because you need to be running when you do it. Um, if you run to the left and fall into the water sooner, it barely saves any time over going down the normal way. So most people do do that. And then one runner actually considered doing it to the right, where instead they would float through the ceiling. But that requires you to be extremely precise with where you're positioned, and that would save a lot of time. It's just we're not really sure how RTA friendly it would be. Not that it'd be completely inviolable, just probably, nobody's probably gonna do that. But if they do, I'd be really surprised. One of my favorite things about running this game is just getting to listen to the music. Um, this entire soundtrack is... There's no bad songs. It's just awesome. Yeah, it's, I can definitely agree to that. I'm very passionate about this soundtrack. <laughs> the music in this game is definitely wonderful. As wonderful as the graphics, honestly. Sound effects, too. I Sound effects are kind of slept on a little bit, but they're as good as the NES can pretty much produce. Mm. Gold split, let's go. Nice. That was the best 4-3 I've ever done. That's good. I forgot you had your live split crazy. up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and here right. we are going to drop Tornado again and try to mix Curly. Ooh, dang it. We were going for Wheel. Um, Wheel is a funny power. In the remake, Nightmare in Dreamland, uh, the, the main power is Wheel. It's very, very fast in that game, very ideal. In this game, Wheel is interesting. It's fast, but you'd have to start and stop it so frequently that it really wouldn't be worth it for like, consistent movement. But this room is designed for you to go down very quickly with it, so it just works out. I love mixes like that because if you fail them, like, they're, it's not a huge deal because the wheel's right there. Oh, nice yeah. job on getting that UFO. That mix is really tricky, particularly because of the enemies where they're placed at inside those little blocks. Uh, grabbing them just right, it can be really annoying. Cause and it's so important. It's, yeah. You lose like 10 seconds minimum. Yeah, because then you have to you actually it. fight the rolling turtle normally either with just spark or with whatever power you might have accidentally mixed. And here in 4, 5, wonder what will you do? You oh, actually yeah. went for it and you got tornado. Nice. This, right. Let's see if I know what to do with it. <laughs> this is a <laughs> newer strat. Um, usually we would just take burning here and then drop it as soon as we get to the arena. This arena, Powerless, I like it. This is one of the only annoying arenas. Um, most of the Meta Knights, as they're called, when they spawn in, they have like a consistent pattern. Um, this arena actually has a Meta Knight who spawns in and just goes into a random direction, so that can like really throw you off. But you, you did get on that one. Uh, the end seemed a little bit troubling. Oh. At Oh, that mechanic there where if you inhale like a power-up that you already had and then another power-up, it always defaults back to the one that you already had. I love that mechanic. It's just so nice because, like, if I lost my tornado there, I would have been a little bit sad. Um, but thankfully, I inhaled, when I inhaled the tornado and the power-up, the burning power-up, it, it gives you, it defaults back to the one that you had before, which for, in this case, was the tornado. If you ever try another this Kirby game, uh... <laughs> Don't look forward to that in Superstar. It does the opposite. It gives you the power of whatever other enemy you inhaled, which is annoying, but yeah, that happens. Uh, speaking of, you mentioned earlier as well, in addition to like losing your star, uh, losing your star is very different in most of the other Kirby games too. This one is funny. As you said, it can be hard to recover. Your star kind of flies really fast and it can get away from you very easily. In some of the other Kirby games, your star barely goes anywhere or it bounces around for like 20 full seconds. So like you can just definitely recover it easily. But yes, um, another clip in this level, another switch that was done pretty well. We will be ending the level with high jump. It would be lovely to take Tornado here, but um, unfortunately this next boss is, it's pretty much developer intended that you, I mean, you don't have to use high jump, but it's I would very much be encouraged much developer. to do it. Yeah. Um, it's, really, it's really hilarious actually that we mentioned that. Um, 
the credits for this game show Kirby fighting all the bosses with a random power-up, and it shows Kirby fighting Krakow with Tornado, which I tried to do, and it was one of the worst ideas ever. Um, the structure of getting up well, these just clouds. this climb just... Yeah. Yeah, and, and with Krakow, like, coming behind you, like, that that cloud can do damage to me. Yeah, Krakow can uh, on the way up on the way up and knock your power out, so you could lose Tornado right there. But then secondly, whenever you hit Krakow, uh, they, their eye rolls around and you can't hit them again for a few seconds. That stays true even with Tornado. You cannot just, like, go straight through them like the first two bosses. So you'd have to hit Krakow with Tornado, like, ten different times. It's so slow. But yes, that was a really good fight there. And now we're heading I'll take to it. I'm five. actually, uh... So I don't know what my uh, somehow I'm like ten seconds ahead. I think that that tornado really carried me a little bit through World Four. Oh, right. You don't. You didn't do that. Because I usually PB, don't do that. Yeah. My PB doesn't do that. that yeah. That does save about ten seconds taking that or having burning. And here, uh, where am I going? High jump. And could you guess? Oh my gosh. I that setup was interesting. I've seen it before. I just haven't seen oh, yeah. too many people do it. But yes, yeah, so I was gonna say guess what we were gonna be getting back. Uh, tornado. <laughs> It's kind of a shocker, I know, but um, this, we just it's just, you know, really what good. I felt like going with, you know. <laughs> and another hidden switch. A lot of the switches in this game are very well hidden. They made it, I mean, that was not too bad, but in the remake of Nightmare in Dreamland, they made some of them a little easier to find, um, which is, I think, was a good change because, uh, you know, sometimes there's, like, no indication. It's just, like, you know, it's like Mylon's Secret Castle. You just have to... I, you know, mash buttons until you find something. I wouldn't say it's that cryptic, but some of them are definitely more hidden. Like the one in 4-1 where it's just behind a star that's in the background. Uh, that one's definitely tricky. There's a... There's a... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. There's a trick you can do with the tornado movement where if you start from the right position and rebound off the... Uh, platform just right, you will be launched into the water at high speed, but being a bit off means you go straight over it. There's lots of little things like that. This is a really good level, um, just in general, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those, like, door-to-door -door type things, and I like levels like this, and, uh, there's a couple of levels that I think I prefer later, but, um, this is one of my favorites. Um, I would say in the entire run. I used to not like this level because I used to run it without Tornado and you'd have to fight bonkers here with Ball and Ball is a very uh, difficult power to work with. It's very awkward. Uh, Ball in general I don't think appears much in the Kirby series beyond this in the remake and then just spin-offs. Like, it just doesn't exist that much. It's funny though because Kirby is very uh, spherical. Very, very spherical. But the cannons. <laughs> these cannons are funny. Um, the ones, the shots, those, what they're called, on the left, those are going to fire. Um, the ones on the right don't fire if you get closer to them. And surprisingly or not, uh, the game lags more when they fire. So if you just stay close to them, you save like about a second or so. <laughs> just really silly, small optimization on that. this room, I don't really, like, it's designed for wheels, so going through it with Tornado can be a bit awkward at times with the slopes, because slopes in this game, something I actually hadn't mentioned, when you go down a slope like that, uh, you build up a lot of speed. Um, when you go up a slope, it does the opposite, where it acts kind of, I guess, realistic, where it's very steep. Oh, yeah. Also, very nice dodging those. Adam's going for a strat where he will be damage boosting, so he didn't want to let go of Tornado there on the spikes. Yeah, spikes, they strip your power up. Uh, if, like, if you, well, if you lose it and then the, and then it bounces into the spikes, which in that room, it, it's going to, because uh, they're everywhere. But um, if it, the spikes kill your power up. Like, they make them disappear like that, which I did intentionally so I could... Uh, damage boost yeah, through here, which is really fun this night nice. <laughs> because um, if, if you take damage while going at high speed, uh, when Kirby's hurt, it'll keep the momentum of that speed, so you just go through the room really fast. Personally, I'm not fond of the strap, but it can be nice. 
it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just really risky and it makes going through the last room into the last level kind of tricky to do. Like you'd have to be as careful as Adam was. And then you also this is have a to risky use ball, strat. which uh, can be awkward. Just jump sometimes. Oh, I like it. I like it. You're doing I fine. Like it. That was good. All right. That's ideal. Yeah. Yeah, using the ball for can be really tricky. Yeah, if you slide off an edge in this game, you get preserve a ton of speed, and uh, with the ball, if you just keep bouncing like that, uh, it's really nice because you preserve the speed. And uh, you can do that with, like, frame-perfect jumps and stuff, which is, you know, you try to do that as much <laughs> as possible to preserve speed, but with the ball, it's just... You just have to, like... It's very technical. You have to make sure you have, like, the exact speed there, or else you'll fall, you'll fall in the pit and die, so... That's not good, right. if that happens. This upcoming level has a switch. It can be done one of two ways. Are you gonna go with the safe way? The safe, I say, not I'm, like you're gonna I'll risk. Go, I'll go UFO, what, if, it depends on, let me see if the if the thing shoots at me, I'll go for UFO. Not a lot of runners go for this strat. Okay, and we're not gonna do it here. The, the normal way, as intended, you're gonna take fire and then switch to high jump. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing this, of course. This is standard. Pretty much everybody does this. However, um, it, it's luck. If the hot head shoots fire at you, it'll slow down, and then it'll be in better position for you to grab both it and the Starman and mix them. And you'll want to aim for UFO, and using UFO, uh, it, well, UFO is a very fast power up. Uh, and it makes this clip easier yeah. coming up. This clip is very risky, uh, through the ceiling. but I have to. You, you kind of have to do it. Yeah, I know I screwed it up. That's all right. You can retry it as much as you want. As long as you don't get stuck in the center. Uh, too low. It is worth going for this though, because if you miss it like a lot, then it isn't. But I think if you get it like. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Third try or fourth try, it's still worth uh, it. There is a mini boss that we're skipping in the center. Uh, a fire lion who's an enemy who can't be uh, hit with tornado. They'll grab you. But yeah. Um, your foe would have been nice, but it's okay. It moves fast and it gets through the ceiling way easier without having to worry about floating back down. I might try a new strat here that I worked on today. I'm curious what that would be. Just because I want to, I just want to show Tracy. <laughs> okay. That's not the strat. That was just improvisation. Improvisation can go a long way in this room. Uh, there's a there's a few ways people do that room. Most people do the same thing, but the, whenever I try that, like most people will mix hammer early and then carry it across the platforms with the wheels and hit them. But every time I tried to do that, I would just get smacked by a wheel and drop hammer, and, and then I'd be annoyed. So instead, I, I would always mix hammer off of some of the last wheels in the room, which itself can be risky if you miss them. You need hammer yeah. for 100%. This is the only power up that'll get you in here besides UFO, and in UFO, the mix for UFO is harder than the mix for hammer, so I think, I, right? Oh, no, definitely. Like really not off those wheels, um, hammer is the first power that you get, so it's definitely way easier when a, when a power is up first, you can just hold A or B when you press down and it'll stop on it instantly. So, yeah. Uh, Even in any... Do you get hammer in any percent no, or do you just keep in tornado? in any percent, you would keep tornado and fight heavy mole. Uh, which, speaking of, with hammer, it can be a bit hard because uh, hammer is very strong. I said that earlier, but hammer has, like, almost no range. That was a good fight, though. That was really good. Good RNG, too. Yeah, not a bad pattern. The worst it could have really done is just go, keep going up and up, but when it goes down, it's way oh, shout easier out my friend. to avoid getting hit. Dave, Dave from the Hammer. Hammer, he, he loves hammers, and, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, um, here we are in World 6, where every level has a switch, so now we're going to have to be really, really careful. Um, fortunately, though, um, the first switch you need Hammer to get uh, I don't want to jinx you or anything, but if you were to lose it, there is at least a good backup for it. But we're just gonna focus on uh, having a hammer. And okay, you're safe. The um, 
When I was starting this game, 6-1 was one of the most annoying levels to me ever because this room and the next room just have too much going on. This room in particular it has lots of sparkies and lots of flamers, and if either of them hit you, you will be plummeted into a pit because you get stunned. And Kirby does not run out of stun until, like, they hit the ground. <laughs> so you just die a lot if you're not prepared for that room. And then this room is just... It can be a bit annoying at times because of how many enemies there are. But very you, went through, it, you went through it very, very well. It was very good. That's a very tough stage. It's uh, always nice when it goes... Yeah, that went... Smoothly like that. That went very smoothly. So, cool. Now in 6-2, the power that we're going to be wanting... <laughs> is stone getting past that uh void knight is funny i i do something personally where i turn around in the air as i start the level to get my burning positioning to be a little better but uh yeah this room is Since funny this cannon will shoot at you if it doesn't aim up and i don't even actually know how to consistently make it aim up sometimes it just does depending on where i'm at but it's it's odd but yeah uh, stake posts like these, you can break them with hammer or stone, and luckily there was a stone in that room, so that's all fine. So yes, that's... Yeah, it's just faster to go out of your way to get the stone, because it's almost like the intended, you know, sometimes the intended thing that the, like, developers, like, expect you to do for a secret end up being faster, it's, so... It's funny, though, you could possibly argue that there's two intended ways, because that stone is there, but two sparkies, if you let the, uh, mix run out when you inhale them, it'll give you a hammer, and they put those two in that room, so I, I don't even know what's it is more intended anymore. Um, That's a great point. Uh, in the remake, they put two sparkies by the 6-1 yeah, they do. secret, they which is do. the same thing, hammer. Yeah, they changed the layout of the room. They trap two sparkies in a block so you can get them easily. Um, and 6-3 is an interesting level for its switch because uh, one of the better Kirby runners for most of the series, uh, Swordsman Kirby, really cool uh he thinks that the method of getting the switch in this level is intended what we do where we uh also nice we um we're gonna take fire and we're gonna do something funny with it because this game is neat where whenever you inhale a power uh kirby like goes to an animation where they use it immediately and we actually just use fire underwater just like that which we were debating a little bit if that's like intended to be a thing because you cannot use fire. They do give you the laser. There is a detour that has a laser, which yes. is another strat. But it seems like the fire. It's they like said, they they put it there for a reason, not to bait you or anything. I, it's it's cause that's the thing. It's either either the fire is there just to uh, taunt you because you can't use it, but then you say, guess what game? I can use it, and you just get in the water and do that or you go and get the laser and use that instead. But yeah, so regardless, it's, it's very neat that you can do that. I don't think that works in the remake, but the remake does other things anyways for its root, so yeah. So what are we going to be doing for 6-4? Are you going to play it safe? You are going to reset. Okay. There is... Well, kind of with the reset, kinda. yeah. Okay, yeah. I say, well, I, I it's been working for me in cool. runs. As long as you know what you're if doing. I do it this way. Um, I'll let you focus. That's not perfect, but... You did it. I mean, okay, I, I it. think as long as you get the end result, uh, you did it. You did it just fine. So that was really good. That was um, a bit complicated to explain, but I'll do it anyway. Um, so more RNG manipulation was done there. Uh, I didn't explain in particular, whenever a Kirby bonks into a surface like the ground or a wall, uh, stars will generate. And whenever those stars generate, the game uses RNG to decide what side they should pop out from. And with that knowledge, um, moving through the room the way Adam did, as long as you move through it and get the stars to pop out in the same spots where you jump, you'll be doing it the same way every time. Um, and Adam also ran into one of those Kabu enemies, and when that died, it also generated stars. So all of that, all of that movement, as funny as it looked, was intended just to get the stars moving the right way, just so that the ball enemy went all the way to the Blade Knight. Because otherwise, trying to get those two together would be just a complete, like, gamble, like, just pray that they get together somehow. But, you know, that, that, all that was good. Um, 
I completely talked yeah, over. Yeah, I golded. That was good. <laughs> I don't know how. You did very good. I completely Sweet. talked over the fact that you did a clip <laughs> that was a little complicated because you have to go through the oh, middle of the level. clip, yeah. Okay, you were fine. Yeah. Uh, that, that level, uh, six four can be a bit daunting at times, but no, that was, that was all good. And here we are in six five. This level I thought was hard for me with, uh, burning or fireball. I, I, I realized I kept calling it burning. Um, I didn't even mention, so Adam's playing on the US version. This game, this game, this is the only Kirby game that calls burning fireball. Every other game that has had it just changed it to that. So I'm just used to that name. Also because I play on the Japanese version, but yeah. Um, this, this power is very good for World 6. We've used it in the last world. We're using it here, uh, in the last level, we're using it here and we're using it in the next level as well to get to the switches, so yes. There we go. Switches are nice because they reset um, you to the neutral position so you can, uh, well, I didn't get it there, but I was, you know, I could have used the power up if I wanted to, like right out of the midair, which is really nice. Switches are also very handy because they refill your health if you're having trouble not getting hurt. And World 6 can definitely hurt you a lot, so it's appreciated. Oh, this level. This this is just chaos. Be careful. I hate going low in this room. That is very uh, worrisome for me, but you did just fine. So yes, you took Fireball Burning to that switch, and you got every switch successfully, very, very nicely. And now Thank you. you will be taking UFO. Almost everybody yeah, takes Yeah, everything UFO. with the UFOs are random. Yeah. This is just, this room, I'm going to get hit a few times. Uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm glad I did. I think I would have been dead if I didn't get hit there. Um, Maybe. You can still inhale after it, you use burning. You would have probably been fine if you caught yourself. Yeah, yeah UFO. That was actually good. That, I like this. You can take UFO's out both of awesome these for this Mr. Frosties at once. No problem. That's smooth, like smooth operative. Hmm. <laughs> My mom's still here, I promise. <laughs> it seems like it's pretty technical. <laughs> yeah, this, I didn't mean, oh, I wasn't trying to call you out. I just wanted to make a pun about that fight. Very good. Whenever I start talking Oops. about this run, I feel like I may have a little too much to explain because there's just, there's just way too much going on. It's just I too much. I actually am kind of wondering, Adam, so the last time you were here, you uh, were speedrunning Super Mario Brothers 2, and I'm kind of curious like how this compares to something like uh, Kirby's Adventure. Do you find this game more challenging? Um... To Mario 2, I would say they're pretty similar in difficulty because um, the tech, if you add up all the tech with Kirby, it kind of kind of evens out with the tech of all four characters in Mario 2. I'd say There's it's pretty a lot similar. That goes on Mario 2 as well. That's fair, yeah. Also, cool. resetting to refill health is a very smart idea, especially before Meta Knight. Meta Knight can be really random. He kind of just walks around and blocks a lot, or sometimes it gets aggressive. Um, and as you see, Adam took four damage at three health. That wouldn't have been very friendly. Yes. I think you're doing really good. All right, Tracy, you want to play a, uh, a game? Guess how far ahead or behind I am of, on my PB, and I'll let you know. I want to play hot and cold. I want to say you're 20 minutes ahead. Maybe 15. 20, wait, wait, 20 what? Uh, it's, I say 20 minutes, 20 seconds oh. ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I know what you meant. I thought, I, okay. I, uh... You're act so if if you guess high that would be, I guess hot. So it's a little less than twenty. No, a little less than that, maybe ten. Oh my gosh, through the middle there, that is. Oh, that worked. I would be. I always get really low if I'm flying through the a whole, floating through the whole room. Also, this clip is just funny to me because there's like an entire intended way of getting to this room that involves breaking a lot of the blocks, like every single block. Uh, but yeah, no, we're just not gonna touch any of the blocks as uh, breaking them as well. Yeah, I need a power up for the next stage uh, for the first hit on uh, Bonkers, but having ice is super nice because it makes lag reduction. Ice is nice, you know. Ice it's is just... nice. <laughs> uh, I also I, I like this the strap on Bonker anyway because you, uh, you're gonna hit him with ice and then you're gonna get hurt and then you're gonna drop your star and take his star too. So you just, you just stand in the right spot, hit him, ouch, got him. <laughs> you're like, it's just like that, like, okay, I took the hit, but it's okay. And the rest of this can, you know, all these next enemies, will they'll grab you 
Yeah. Um, uh, I don't like that pattern. Two. Oh, the tour. All right, this has Just to be the. Just wait, save. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah that was the. That was the. Had me a little worried, but there was no problem. Yeah, these enemies can all. Like, they, they'll come straight at you if they're playing nice, and if they're not, they'll jump, and then that might cause a bit of a panic, but you handled it really well. This one, I don't like fighting fire away. What the they, heck is this pattern? They love to what waste your time pattern? by like not jumping. Oh, and you're just feeling it. Wow. Yeah, not not. Well, I already got I already got that weird pattern. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I might, might as well be aggressive here. And I honestly, I like I your I like your thinking. Uh, most people, well, I'm on... they just wait for him to jump and then be vulnerable. But I, I started to hate waiting on him, so I just started to be a little more risky like that myself. But yeah, they looked like it worked out. So, yeah, uh, seven two can be a bit rough, but it was fine. And now seven three. I this seven three has killed a lot of my runs. This is one of my least favorite levels, but I I, I guess I kind of like it a little more now. I don't know. Like I've, I've gotten used to it. Most of the things I thought was bad about this game, I just took a lot of practice and very good mixes. You, That's a very important. You've gotten pretty much every mix, I think first try. I don't think you've had to retry any mix at all, so that was really good. And that was like pretty much the last mix in the run, so yeah. Yeah, I'm very pleased with how the mixes are yeah. going. Uh, I missed the we the only one I missed was the wheel, and that's like oh, seven right, seconds. Oh, right, right. Like, I actually forgot about that one. Uh, that one, you know, we, we can forget about yeah, that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I literally that did. Important. That's how well you've been doing it, like all the other mixes. I forgot there was one that even failed, and it wasn't even a bad one to fail, so yeah. Uh, very, very well, good. it's just weird because like I do. I've this is my 296th attempt, <laughs> and this is like the best pace I've ever been on. Uh, this is the best pace. If I play perfectly, I can sub 50. Well, um, you, I don't know if I'll get it, but you just play your best. No pressure. No pressure. Just having fun, aren't we? I mean, that's what speedrunning is about. Oh, just this, having a good time. Yeah, I could care less if I PB or not. I'm just happy to right, be here. Yeah, speedrunning is just about having a good time and showing people cool things about old games or new games. <laughs> These rooms are funny because the first two have the enemies moving around randomly, and then the last two are all consistent. But sometimes they can still be annoying because they're they're waggy if you get hit. But we will not be getting hurt here. I'm pretty sure doing just fine. This last room. I haven't actually told you about it, but the Sparky there can be really annoying. I don't think it's ever happened to you. Sometimes that Sparky can Once. just plummet immediately. Has it ever hit you? Once. Once. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't. It was a. It was like a borderline run, but that it actually that was like. Yeah, that took it out. Yeah, that Sparky that, took me out. That Sparky. One. I think it was once. It was very rare. Yeah, very rare. That Sparky has killed at least like three of my runs ever, out of the many. Um, it, it, I thought it was random. I mean, it technically is, but I learned there's something consistent about it. That Sparky. Oh gosh, I hate going under the wheel when it's falling. Um, that Sparky, it, it can spark or it can start jumping around while it's in that little cube that it's in. And it turns out that if the if the space below it breaks while it's jumping, when it reaches its peak, it'll start falling way faster. I didn't even know that was a thing. Like I was like, oh, that's just literal physics. Like that was just it, so off guard when it falls on you. But yeah. Um, seven, five, uh, looking a little... A little rough, but again, nothing too bad. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. Making mistakes in this game. I'm gonna need to uh, gold some things a little <laughs> bit, but that's that's what this stage is meant for. This is this, this stage, is a this stage is fun. Uh, the music, the music. Uh, my favorite thing about this stage is that uh, Kirby's Dreamland came out in 1992, and this game came out in '93, like almost a year later exactly or whatever. And already we have a stage dedicated to that game like as if it's a nostalgic callback but for many now i'm sure it, it would go that way and it's honestly i think it's a really fun stage to move through because there's not too much intimidating about the rooms but there's a bit of interesting movement like this right here with the tornado i like doing that i don't want to mess around with these uh... yeah, those enemies what are the names of those enemies uh, kabus I'm yeah pretty kabus sure. are not my not my best friends you know, Pippi and I are homies, but uh, me, not me and the Kabus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're cool. We're cool. And here we 
are in the last room. I've actually had like maybe one or two runs where I forgot to get the switch in this level because it's right next to the door, which is uh, not a fun feeling. You have to play the entire level again. So the switch in this room, this might be one of the more cryptic ones because it's just hidden under the moon. But yeah, pretty sure you've gotten- And that started a like a tradition. Like there's a lot of Kirby games that like they use the moon in the final like nostalgic level. It's like a thing where- mm. Yeah. yeah, it's super cool right. and cute. All right, you want to explain this uh, madness here? More resetting to manipulate things. We're going to get DD to play nice because DD does not play nice with uh, Tornado or many other powers for that matter that are strong. Uh, surprisingly, um, Ball is very, very strong, as awkward as it is to use, but you have to just barely graze DD's body and uh kinda messed this up a little. I might be able to I thought it was going fine. It, but you you're doing well. Despite all that. Yeah, that was good. You're doing fine. Um oh, yeah. I'm supposed to stand I forget what happens there, but you wanna be floating or in control. But it's fine. So yeah, there goes D to D. Uh people used to fight him with no manipulation but still with ball so they just had to completely wing it which i can't imagine doing because it, it's just too precise where you have to get him but yeah on to nightmare where the first phase is this orb um and the orb is pretty much consistent every time with the only uh random things being that sometimes it might shoot like two more stars here or there but yeah, it kind of, like, you'll take a bit of damage here, but it's fine as long as you don't lose all your health. And it, most people intentionally get hurt right there because you can keep hurting the orb as it's in uh, on top of Kirby. And yeah, so the first phase was... Well, yeah, I'd say. I'm uh, 19. I'm 19 seconds ahead of my PB. 19. Okay. <laughs> I, might, I, I, I might actually PB here. I guessed earlier which it's, 20. Uh, Did that add up a little more to that? I saved some in uh, the, the DDD fight because my PB messed that up. I saved some in 7-6 because that was really good. I have a time save here, but um, that first phase, I think I need to go 6-6 six or six to get it. But this is just, it can be very no. random. Yeah, on the, in the wizard phase, um, some of the turns, it's a bit locked depending on like when he'll shoot. But everything else is pretty consistent. So it's just hoping you uh, can anticipate those two turns the most. But so far, it's looking good. The next turn is the one where it's really like, he, he, when he appears again, he'll either immediately fire or just wait a little bit. Oh, oh no. Okay. And that happens. So we're going to take one extra turn. I think turn. I can still PB though. Oh, still can. I got it. Yeah. As long as you don't miss like two this turns. The, uh... Missing two turns really seals it. And on this final hit, that is our run. 50 11 that's a 21 second pb nice nice <laughs> run very good time wow, wow. Like pb on, on the we love that on the hot fix he beat on the hot fix that's amazing adam thank you so much um okay seriously kirby's adventure looks so challenging but so fun uh, yes. and i really appreciate you both being here um adam for, thank you so much for running this tracy for commentary uh do y'all have any shout outs or anything you'd like to, to say <laughs> I'll let Tracy go first. Personally, sure, yeah. I'd like to shout out uh, the entire Kirby community. Even though not everybody is passionate about this game, we're all very passionate about Kirby. Um, and pretty much everybody, like, I I've been in a few speedrunning communities, and I'm not going to say any of them are bad, but th in the Kirby uh, community, we're all very, very friendly and all generally willing to help pretty much anybody learn any of the games. And we do a lot of fun events, like, Sometimes we have uh, races through like all the classic games and sometimes some of the modern ones too. And those are fun to join in. It is fun just race things in general. Would you like to race Kirby sometime, Adam? I've been meaning to ask you that. <laughs> yes. I think that's Yes, really uh, maybe we can get on to that. Uh, I think Brasench has got a grudge match. I mean, we're mortal enemies, so that we'd be perfect for that, going, doing some Kirby race. Oh, we are know. mortal enemies, I see. <laughs> I was I, like, oh, I, you, you both seem that way. I, I <laughs> ought to step up my no, Mario I, game <laughs> as well. But yeah. Uh, Tracy's awesome. Make sure to follow Tracy and, uh, yeah. Um, if you like Kirby, if you like Mario, make sure to give me a follow. I stream pretty often. But, um, yeah, shout outs to the Kirby community. Kirby is just such a positive figure in gaming, and, uh, the community is 
I, I just got into it and it's it's I feel so at home and uh, yeah. I love this very much and uh, thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, I was a honor as always to show y'all some good speed running and uh, yeah. When you said you went on the yeah. run this, I was really excited and I'm I'm not disappointed. You're really really killing it, really killing it. Well, I think thank you, I thank you. Think, uh, if you want to watch Adam progress through this game a little bit more, make sure to uh, check out his Twitch channel at uh, twitch.tv slash Adam Ferrari. I uh, posted the links in the chat for uh, Adam as well as Tracy here on Twitch, so make sure you follow both of them. Uh, but yeah, uh, before we break, I want to let everyone know that from now until July 15th, uh, GDQ revenue from subs, Prime Gaming subs, um, gift subs, and bits cheered after taxes will all be donated by GDQ to Doctors Without Borders for our upcoming uh, marathon of SGDQ. So just want to let everybody know that. And we will be right back with Jurassic Park. All right, everybody, thank you so much for your patience. We are back from break. If you're just tuning in, you are watching Time Capsule. Uh, and if you're interested, make sure you check out at Games Done Quick on Instagram to get bite-sized highlights from not only this show, but all of our Hot Fix shows and events. Uh, right now, we are all set up for the next run, which is Jurassic Park. And I have a rowdy bunch of gents here, Retro Brando, Faust, and Clicks Gaming. Uh, Brando, you want to start off introductions? Sure, I'm Retro Brando. I wouldn't say I'm very rowdy. I just like to have fun and play <laughs> video games fast. I have uh, Clicks Gaming with me, my childhood hero, because he's like 65. And then I have my buddy Faust, uh, another great speedrunner, both of them. Hi. Yeah, just say hi. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so whenever you're ready, Brando, you can give us the countdown and... Um, We'll see about getting the feet up for our commentators very soon. All right, perfect. Just a quick little introduction on this. Uh, just in the last two months, we've had some like of the best Sega runners help optimize this run. So on a sub six run in just two months alone, there's been a 35 second time save. So I'll do my best to showcase it. I'm going to go for the most optimal strats. Uh, total, there'll be three optimized runs. And uh, yeah, let's try to have a good time. Because I'm excited. Me right. too. Let's go. All right. Gosh, <laughs> you guys bash, ready? Gosh. Hey, gosh, bashers. Um, I can count down now? Yep. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with any percent grant. Uh, three, two, one, go. Good luck, dog. I'm going to need it. Yeah, good luck. So one thing that you can do is quick pickups. Uh, it saves a bit of time, but it also looks cooler. Um, there's been some changes in the jungle. We've learned a lot about like lag reduction and things like that by knocking out some of the dinosaurs on screen. Let's see if we can get the 40 watt bop here. Got it. And the 40 flowers with the boost speed. Got that too. Wow, that was pretty good. You can actually avoid this spit by pressing left and right, which I didn't get. That's called the electric slide. It says 0.5 seconds. I got that jump there. Let me see if I can get this third jump. That's the best clip you can get inside the cave. I'm going to throw this grenade. This is bad RNG, so I have to wait. So let me see if I got a lag wave here, which slows down. That wasn't too laggy, which is not bad at all. Knock out the Dilophosaurus. Made that jump and slide to the end. Here comes ladder zip, something Dinty found. I find this to be the hardest ladder zip in the game, so I'll do my best to try to get it. Uh, I gotta make sure Grant's feet hit the ground. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I think I'm gonna hit the raptor. Okay, I got hit by the electricity, that's fine. Better than Stop the raptor. It. Yeah, it was the raptor. Oh, was it the raptor? Yeah, yeah I think it was the raptor. Oh, my health looks good, just kidding, that's a lie. <laughs> I lost more than half of it, but we can keep going. Yeah, I needed to dip just a little bit lower, but it was better than like clipping through the uh, ladder and then dying, because that can happen too. Uh, there's grenade boost in this, which increases Grant's speed. And there's another thing that's been introduced in the run where if you shoot at the right time, Grant can get boost speed. It will be used a lot on the last stage, which is the visitor center. Uh, this zip's not too bad, but I would say it's one of the coolest looking ones. Um, depending on the timing is when you jump out of the end of the level. So looking at it, I'm gonna have to jump last minute. That was the power station. Here's the river, everyone's favorite level. Just kidding again. I think a lot of people grew up playing this game and quit here. I understand you 100%. This level's awful and it's confusing. All right, so this level has to do with a lot of lag reduction. So <clears throat> you can save about a second and a half in this level, 
by uh, just knocking out the dinosaurs. So when they're active on screen, it can cause more lag. So that's why if you see me randomly shooting dinosaurs, I'm not just doing that for fun. It's very serious stuff, especially this one right here. This is a boost jump to uh, pick up the gas canisters because you need to pick up a lot of gas in this or you run out of gas. <clears throat> so yeah, um, this strat coming up is using a Dilophosaurus to cancel your death animation, which I found years ago, and then 40 watt range and Dinty found a way to manipulate the Dilophosaurus so we don't have to YOLO it anymore and reset hundreds of times in a row. And the good thing about it is that you could still get the YOLO timing from it. So I'm gonna try to get this. A bit nervous about it, but like I said, I wanna showcase it the best I can. I believe you got this. Well, that was scary because that spit. Here we go. Nice, got it. Yeah. <sighs> All right, let's do another try to get another quick pickup here. Nice. This is a new sewer zip that Dinty found, and then, uh, you know, we all kind of got together and, you know, pretty much optimize it even more. When you see the pipe, you hold the uh, stun gun, which if you let, if you don't shoot anything, he'll just fall through the level, and eventually he'll land on the top, and you but just if you hold shoot right here. Uh, kind of like yeah. Escalate and there's the exit. Up. My boy Chubb has found this great speedrunner. It's the top route of the canyon, but can also be pretty rough. And your timing is very important. One, two, three. I'm going to try to get this here. And then you got to try to catch the jump, which I did. Very nice. Uh, you can get a clip here, but it's extremely hard to get. So I don't think I'm going to get it. Oh, okay, I didn't get that, but that's okay. Wait, hold on. I'm like getting all the hard stuff, but not this. <laughs> a lot of the strats in this new canyon were a lot of task strats that Chubb has there we go. made. Yeah, he's possible. great. Um, I'm going to try to get the fastest uh, drop here in the volcano. Okay, I didn't get it, but I ended up doing the Storm Crow strat, which is a little bit slower. I'm probably going to have to actually... I'm probably going to die because of my health so low because of that Velociraptor attack. Uh, Visitor Center has become a very rough level because of all the boost speeds. Sometimes you can miss that, but that's okay. Didn't get boost speed there, which is fine. Oh, it's okay. Um, there's the Bob you can do, and then there's the Tony. This is like 0.5 slower. I actually did not get it, but that's okay. I got boost speed at the end, and I'm gonna do a quick rocket exit. Got another boost speed. Ban in it. And also, I, I feel like Jurassic Park has some of the uh, best uh, Video game movie music, it's so good. This is like one of my favorite songs. Uh-oh. Okay, that's okay. I knew that was gonna happen, so. Like I said, this run could be pretty intense, <clears throat> but it could have been a lot worse, so I'm actually quite happy with this. Oh no, we got Raining Raptor. Why is this Raptor being such a jerk? That means I have to probably do quick exit so I don't get rained on. Yeah. <laughs> We got the boost though. See how fast he's going? So it increases grant speed. You could save about a second here. So that was a good save to be honest. I'm happy with that. One, two, three. We use flash nades here because it reduces lag. And we also shoot that Raptor because it's less lag on the screen. And then Chubb has found this really quick exit strat, which is, yeah, it's just a timing thing. Let me see if I can get it. Got it, I think. Yeah, I think I got it. Time. Nice. So yeah, it wasn't bad. <laughs> GG, yeah, it wasn't bad at all, honestly. <clears throat> GG. Well, I guess we are going to set up again for Jurassic Park. Only this time we're going to do it with the raptor. So um, I guess stay tuned and we'll be right back while we set that up. All right, everybody. We're back from the super simple switch from Grant to Raptor, any percent. Jurassic Park, uh, Retro Brando is still here whenever you're ready, sir. I sure am, that was a really <laughs> fast run. Did you guys have fun? I did. Now it's time for Raptor, which is even shorter. It's like under three minutes. That's if I don't die a lot, because that would be bad. So I'm ready to start when you guys are. Can I count down? Absolutely. Awesome, thank you. Three, you ready two, to lunge? one. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of lunging in this. Uh, let's go. Yeah, the Raptor and Grant is really cool that they allow you to do both. Most of the time he's gonna be off screen, you can't see him. Kinda like John Cena, but like whatever, I don't care. 
Uh, okay, so I'm gonna drop off here. That was level one. A lot of fun, wasn't it? Great story. All right, let's go to the power station. So there's just a lot of lunge movements, and uh, the only glitch that the Raptor can do at the moment is glitch through walls, doing like a left and right movement. All right. And I, this rock could still be updated, but it's still pretty good for what it is, and it's optimized at the moment for what it is, but it can definitely be cleaned up, so. That guy can sometimes shoot the, uh-oh, the raptor's butt with a rocket. Didn't get me. Oh, Very nice. close. Here's the sewer. Uh, this level's never fun, but I'm gonna do my best to get out of here alive because I owe that to you guys. Let me try to drop and not get hit by a rocket here. Nice, let me try to jump. Okay, this is still fine because then I'm lined up perfectly to climb here. Uh, this pipe clip is a little bit nerve-wracking here, but I'm gonna go for it because like Why not, you know, let's have fun. Okay. I didn't get it, but I'm gonna try again Okay, okay, okay. All right, cool. We got it second try not bad Four five Pass tail jump again. Here's the canyon. I'm gonna try to get the top route if I can't that's okay We'll go for the bottom got it <clears throat> Just a lot of lunges. It's the fastest thing the raptor can do because the raptor's cool. Mm. Grant's cool too, but they're both really cool. All right, see if we can get the fast clip into the visitor center. Nope. All right, here's the visitor center. You guys remember this place. It has the best music. Yeehaw. All right, two, three. All right, let's try to get this uh, clip to the wall first try. Let's make up for the other one. We didn't get it. That's okay. Let's try again. Nope, just kidding. All right, let's just line it up. There we go, it's fine. All right, second section. I actually do a pause here to manipulate the RNG pause, and then I'll drop, and then I'll set myself up perfect to do the jumps again. Let me see if I made it. Nope, not quite, but that's okay. We'll keep it going. A lot of rockets. And then you can just lunge right out of here. <clears throat> We're in visitor center three. It's very short and sweet. BC4 with the vents. There is a tight jump coming up, but, um, I'll see if I can get it. Not nah, just like the wall glitches. It's not a big deal. We'll pull through. You gotta survive. Nice, we got it first try. Awesome. I'm just gonna go ahead and just drop and climb because this jump can be a little tricky. Uh, here's the end part. Grant's gonna try to electrocute you and he succeeds, but that's okay. So I'm gonna kick this rock. Time. Nice. Easy. That, that is a little bit faster than Grant, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's usually around like sub three minutes uh, if you can get it, but yeah, it's around that. Yeah. Nice. Well, it seems like the uh, Game Gear is up next. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a completely different run. They all have the same front cover. So if you guys were like, wow, this is probably the same game, it's not. It's a really <laughs> cool game and I look forward to running it. And then Clix is going to probably tell stories from like 30 years ago. So let's do that. <laughs> all right, we're going to switch over for uh, the Game Gear version of Jurassic Park. So stay tuned. All right, everybody, welcome back to Time Capsule. I'm your host, Smooth Operative, and I am still joined by Retro Brando Faust and clicks gaming and we are getting into the sega game gear version of jurassic park which is very different so brando why don't you uh take it away yeah so this is the uh game gear version it originally came out for master system in 93 they released it for uh, game gear it's a really cool game it's completely different wait why is my con is my not reading my controller sorry one second uh a wall well, that's embarrassing. Hey. It was just this, working, too. This is a marathon. Not supposed to have tech issues. I'm going to yeah, blame right. the raptor. Yeah, that's, that's strange. Hold on a second. Raptor chewed the cord. <laughs> that's a thing. I hate it when that happens. Say <laughs> ever happened if, uh, in a uh, missed out fire? This is never... Oh, here we go. I think I got it. Uh, I think we'll be okay, guys. I think I got it fixed. Uh, we'll just start the splits here. Uh, three, two, one, go. Because it automatically started. <laughs> sure, let's just go right in. Yeah, yeah, is it cool? Yeah, okay. Uh, first stage is going to the Velociraptor pen. Clix actually has world record for this game, so he can, com I mean, he can honestly explain a lot of this run. If he wants to, it's up to him. I, uh, I don't remember anything at all. 
Have I played this? Me either. That's why I asked you. Uh, so each level starts out with a bonus stage. Um, it's the most difficult part of the run as you hit zero buttons. Nothing. That was a joke. All right, yeah. So, so you want? Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to collect anything. The fastest way to get to the level is you just want to like um, not press anything, so your car can get totaled faster. But in the process, um, sorry, I don't like this fire. Yeah, it's a little bit scary. It's kind of tricky. Yeah, so I had to <clears> stop. <throat> yeah, this this runs pretty rough. The drawback to letting the bonus stages just. Do, doing nothing and just dying as fast as possible as you start the levels with uh, one health. That's your chance to build up health for the level, but it, you know, for speed running, you yes. want to just die. So it's basically uh, one hit kill in most of the stages, which can make it pretty rough. We'll try to do some safe strats along the way because you only have <clears throat> three guys until you get a continue. If you get a continue before the last stage, you actually get bad ending, which is that technically I'm fine with that too if it happens because that means the park doesn't open. Uh, we'll try to get this raptor skip here. Totally hmm. not the case. Yeah, so there is a despawn hey, if you get your movement <laughs> just right. A little tricky somehow though. Somehow I made that. Yeah, somehow I made that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Minimal damage. This is fine though. He has two health. Gonna need yeah. one for uh, damage boosting through. One of these yeah, electrical this one's fields tricky. here. I never like this drop. I'm not even joking. Little, it bothers me. Little clip. There we go. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, precise. it's very tight. Um, and there's no RNG really in this run. This is all the same pattern, which you can get some early shots in. Yeah, Sega Master System version of this game. Uh, this boss is RNG. You never know where he's going to come from. And there's another boss. Uh, we'll call it out when we get there. That's also RNG patterns. So that's what's nice about and this version. Is you can in terms optimize of an optimized run, run, this is the best you're going to get. Master System, you know, there's a big RNG factor involved. Yeah. Also a nasty bug where the first boss might loop again after you kill him. <laughs> might just oh, reload Master the boss. Master System? <laughs> yeah, Sega Master Don't System. Don't scare me like that, man. I thought you were talking about... Oh, no, so no, they, not this Yeah, they... The Master System also had Alan Grant. Apparently, this is Grant, too, so they made changes to this port. And the best one is that the guy had a mustache, a thick mustache in the Master System, and they took it away. So that was always kind of upsetting. Uh, this level has, like, the best tune, but in my opinion, it's the worst level in the game. It's kind of stressful, but I will do my best for you guys. Are you going for Fire Skip? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's going to be... Terrifying. He's practicing early. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have an extra health pack just in case, but it still doesn't guarantee it. But like I said, it I want to do the best I can. <laughs> it does. Uh, yeah, it'll be in now. the second screen of this level, going for what's called fire skip. It's very difficult. Uh, you can clip through these and these tornadoes and use iframes to go through, but he's going to save a med pack. So he'll just be doing it safely here. But it's only a few seconds slower, so it's not a big deal. Ugh. I just things scare me, dude. Yeah. The, the zombie yeah. dinosaurs. Even that jump gets me. I'm gonna try this. I'll see how I do. Yeah. So this is a damage boost strat. So using iframes to climb up. Nice. 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 Very nice. That, that is yeah. not it's easy. You can do it. Uh, intended route is to climb the trees and go up and over. That is. Uh, if you, yeah, if you see me hesitating, sometimes the the bombs miss, and I don't, you know, trust it. I really don't want to lose any guys if I don't have to. Yeah, they have mad eye frames when they're coming out of those bushes. Uh oh. Oh boy. Yep. Yeah. See, sometimes I miss it. Come on, oh. dinosaur! Please, you're embarrassing me. Thank you. <laughs> Well, he's having a good time at least. Yeah, sometimes I have a problem throwing it. Okay, this fight can be a little... This is kind of a weird fight, I'm not going to lie. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, so you can one-cycle this boss. want to land behind him. Nice. have to hit him in the air. You have to throw that grenade in the air, the first one. And yeah, then you, I got with hit your, once, but... Yeah, with, he got the correct positioning, so he's able to just mash him down. 
He's supposed to be capturing the dinosaurs, but it looks like he's just honestly killing them. He's like, hey guys, look what I just did. They're like, Grant, you're supposed to be capturing the dinosaurs, not killing them. <laughs> this stage is kind of weird because he's trying to capture a Brachiosaurus, but they're like the friendliest dinosaurs. I, I think this is where Grant starts to lose it. It's so horrible at the end. I mean, if you think about it, he's on like Rainbow Road right now. It's like... The poor Brachiosaurus I would do. He looks so sad. You guys will see it. Um... Again, it's going to be, because if the car gets totaled, it's the fastest way to enter the level. Start with one bar of health. Um, I'm going to do a safety jump here. Sometimes I can still get hit doing it, but we'll see. So far, this hasn't been, like, a bad run, considering. See, I always back up. Like, normally you want to do a fluid jump right over it, but that's not very easy to get. Yeah, they're frame-perfect jumps yeah, so. and grenade tosses but you can do that with without letting go of right but it's very risky yeah clicks found this strat coming up i'll see if i can get it the rj okay he got it he's only going to take nice, one nice. hit there Attached and I usually, manipulation. You yeah you can <laughs> climb here but i just take a hit because i'm about to get a full heal coming up yeah good call Oh, this, yeah. uh, Excuse me, buddy. See, he's a hello. Pretty straightforward timed jumps and shots to keep everything off. Yeah, I'm kind of doing here. the timing wrong, so I'll fix oh. it. <laughs> so the next boss is coming up to you here. Uh, go, in, go for an early three cycle. You can get two hits yeah. on cycle one and two, which leaves him with one hit on the third cycle. Oh, I missed that Ooh, one. Only got one, so he can still get a late third cycle here. Two shots per cycle. Yeah. Yeah, this one. is actually what happened in my PB. I lost a bit of time here because of it. And That's okay. Oh, okay. So we got a force cycle. The nerves are kicking in. That's it's, okay. Uh, it's not easy. You yeah, get it can two be a bit tricky. Yeah, if you cycle. rush it, yeah, I don't think it reads your inputs, right? Well, yeah, the thing is, like, you can it's only like have one projectile on the screen. So when you shoot a rocket in those and the explosions are going left and right, you can't shoot again until there's a cleared off the screen. So it's not like you could just mash rockets at them. So positioning the, the, has to be yeah. just right. And the way your I look first at shot. it is I got, yeah, I got fire pit, so I'm not even mad about anything. Yeah. I'm just happy I got, because if I died there and it like, and I used my health kit and still didn't manage, that would have been like a stressful situation. I'm just happy we're out of the, <laughs> this been stage a, is the worst. Might have been a bad ending run at that point. Yeah. Poor Bracky. I know. Yeah, oh, we're gonna fire take a force death here, yeah. so we can heal up. Yeah, for some reason yes, it can. makes you jump. You can't just. Yeah, because it's the rocket. Yeah, other weapons don't actually make you do that, which is kind of funny. Oh, I didn't know that actually. Yeah, I was messing with it, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. But the reason he killed himself is to respawn to full health. It's actually faster to heal up like that rather than collecting health in the level gonna use this health to damage boost here yeah turning when you damage boost boost you forward instead of just like boosting back so you always want to turn last minute yeah you probably already said that but i'm like i didn't actually oh nice so here uh, use the second health here to skip another platform cycle this jump doesn't look like much uh that can be scary right there yeah, the boulder, if you're really rushing it. This yeah. area can be a little tricky. You can get, like, two shots in a row. Sometimes it's easy to miss it. I'll see what I can do. That's fine. Yeah, it hardly matters. Uh, it's just... There's ways to get a couple less jumps. Because uh, when you land in this game from a jump, all slightly. The less jumps, the better. Spike coming up can be a bit tricky, too. It's really time-based. Yeah, I think it's Especially the when you get fourth the shot bits. that's scary. The, the, when he comes in low, really. Yeah, it's like right out. when his beak hits the tree is when you. Oh, need it's to this hit one. Him. No. Yeah, oh. see that. That's a scary shot. Uh, you have a very small window to hit that. Uh, this would be the other boss that's RNG in SMS version. Nice. Luckily, he's static. Nope, dead. And that one, oof. Yeah, that's bad ending now. Shoot. I probably should have played it safe, but that's okay. 
Yeah, well, I guess this is our last stage, so that's okay. <laughs> to be honest, this is not an easy run. It's it's very grindy, like. Yeah. I'm being not a mad because technically the park's not gonna open, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just saved a bunch of families. Because bad ending, you actually uh, <clears throat> you actually don't open the park. Good ending, you do. And we all know what happens when you open the park. Yeah. <laughs> That happened two times already. I just have to restart this stage, which will right. probably make up for the visitor center. Oh, you you were supposed to die. Oh, uh, it's okay. This, oh, yeah, I can I can get then, extra health here. Yeah, you, you can get it off this guy. Or not. I guess I'm gonna have to take it the slow way, huh? Yeah, just go intended. It's, it's yeah. Not that much slower. Can we duck here? Yep. We can. Yep. You can actually clip into that. Um, Okay. Overhang as you go underneath it. It's not useful, but a little funny thing I found. I'm gonna turn it into a zip, but nothing ever came. <clears throat> so at least you can see what the intended route here is compared to the damage boost strat that he did first time. Yeah, exactly. Let's try that again. We might as well try to get the pterodactyl bite. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's equip this again. Honestly, I would be very scared to run this game in a in a marathon setting. It's yeah, I was thinking about it, but I was like, oh, I might as well give it a shot. I'm usually kind of risky like that. You know, I don't know. I... Respect for doing it though, because it is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a hard one. All right, let's try this again. Yeah, this fight can be tricky, but I gotta try to get it now. Cause this is like the end of the run now. At least you guys good. get to see one of the endings. Yeah, you got a good early shot on that first one, which will buy you a little time. That should help. And give you a little bit more time here. There yeah, we go. there you go. <clears throat> nice. Yeah, that's all we had to do, but yeah, the timing of it can be a little weird. Yeah, it, you know, if you're just late on the first shot, the rest of the fight is nearly impossible yeah uh, because well that's the, cool that at least scrolling. you get two different endings that's that's the that's kind of the cool thing some games would actually give you a game over oh we can call time here okay nice oh, yeah so that's... basically it's saying he was con successful at containing the dinosaurs but he couldn't get the t-rex the only stage we missed because of bad ending because of one continue was the visitor center but it's okay at least we got one of the endings well, um, Brando, do you have any shout-outs or anything you'd like to say before we wrap it up? Yeah, uh, like I said, Clix does have the uh, world record for this game. If you want to check him out, he does a lot of cool speedruns. Uh, he is a great Resident Evil speedrunner as well, as well as like other retro titles. Uh, Clix, it's underscore, right? Underscore gaming? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, can, and then, I can post it in the chat. Yeah, and Faust. Faust is, he runs a lot of Sega stuff. He's a Sega boy as well. Uh, fantastic runner and one of my closest buds um if you guys want to catch future streams i probably will be running this again uh, game again on my stream as well as uh the jurassic park genesis game because i'm trying to get sub 510 on hardware uh, so if you guys want to uh check out future streams i do run a lot of movie games whether it's like casual or speed runs whether the movie game's good or bad i do a variety in my stream so if this triggers your interest uh, it'd be cool for you to catch future streams. If not, it's cool that you guys came out to hang out with me. So I appreciate you. Yeah, well, it was a really Thank fun you. time. That was the whole uh, 1993 Jurassic Park uh, experience. And uh, we appreciate you being here, Brando. Uh, again, I'm going to post all of the links for Brando and uh, our commentators in the Twitch chat. So please make sure you follow them if you want to check out more Jurassic Park stuff or uh, other games. But um, we are going to swap over to the next game. Uh, but before we do, I just want to let everyone know that from now until July 15th, uh, GDQ revenue from subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered after taxes will all be donated by GDQ to Doctors Without Borders, uh, getting hyped for SGDQ. So um, that's very exciting. And uh, yeah, we will be right back with um, Super Mario All-Stars.
everybody. Welcome back to Time Capsule. We are uh, all set up for the next run, which is Super Mario All-Stars. Uh, but before we get rolling, I just want to let you know that Frame Fatales will be having its next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, in late August. So if you're interested, type exclamation mark FF in the Twitch chat or go to gamesdonequick.com slash Frame Fatales for more uh, info. But uh, I'm super excited to uh, announce our, our runner for this evening is Mars02. Uh, Mars, do you want to do some introductions? Yes. Hello, everyone. I am Mars, and I will be running Super Mario All-Stars. We will be doing four of these games, so it's kind of like a four-in-one uh, speed run. And this is a really interesting speed game. It tests your consistency, and it's very fun to do. One of my favorite categories ever. I am joined here by my commentators, Ethan RTA, the world record holder, and Dash Retro. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> well, welcome either <laughs> way. No, <laughs> so I'm Ethan. Good to be here. Thanks for having me, Mars. Yeah. So, we should be ready, so we will do a countdown. We will start in three, two, one, go. All right, good luck. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I've been muted this whole time, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, so technical this difficulties be... for Dash has been muted the whole stream, uh, but I think maybe Dash is here now. <laughs> yeah, this will be super <laughs> nice. awkward for all the commentators that now have to hear me, like, say all that stuff over again. <laughs> but you guys <laughs> didn't good, hear man. it. We, we, we were talking about that. So, so the... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Dash. First of all, and uh, yeah, we're so we're um, we're doing all four any percent. So Mario All Stars, the Super Nintendo game that contains all four of the NES uh, or Famicom, as it were, in the case of Lost Levels, uh, Mario games. And so you got to play through all four of them in a row, any percent style. Uh, which the craziest thing about that is that, you know, Lost Levels in the first game, they control kind of similar to each other, but then when you get to Mario 2, whole different game, and Mario 3, whole different game. So um, there's a ton of tech in each of these games that you have to know, uh, and then there's three whole games to learn. Yeah, and being able to switch between two different games, it's, it's like, so difficult when you start out. It's, it's very surprising. Like, just try playing Lost Levels and then go to 2U, and it's so awkward. But but at, at Mars's level, he's very talented, and he can just switch between them like it's nothing, and it's such a cool thing to check out. And like the skill that you have in all four of these games, it's it's such a cool speed run to show off. Right, right, yeah. And like it, it. Oh, go ahead. It's something that you can kind of only do once you've already put a ton of time into each of the different games individually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and like, like this, so this this game plays very similar to the. What's that? And to you, takes a lot of time, in my opinion. But yeah, this gameplay is very similar to like. Yeah, I guess so. It, it just plays so different from the other Mario games that it, I think it did take me the longest to adjust to as well. Like, like SMB One and Lost Levels play just like the NES version, and then Two U plays a little different. Like you, you fall faster, and a few other mechanics are actually changed quite a bit, unlike the other games. And actually, and then, a unique thing to the Japanese version, you, you see him, like, immediately be on the right side of the flagpole. That only happens on this if you hit, like, a certain item. In some levels, you can hit an item block, and then it saves, it's basically free time save. You just hit an item, and you fall off the flagpole faster. It's, like, a very strange thing that you'll see randomly throughout these games. Yeah, and you'll see it a lot more in Lost Levels, because in Lost Levels, for whatever reason, if you jump at the flagpole with Mario facing backward, then he'll fall, uh, he'll slide down the right side of the pole every time. 
Um, and so, yeah, yeah, that's like free time save every level. But for some reason in this one, it's only some levels. And only if you've done a seemingly random prerequisite task, you know, such as hitting <laughs> a certain hitting a certain power up block or something. That's a good way to describe it. I, I think you just have to hit the star block in 8-1, or maybe you don't even have to do anything for that particular level. I honestly do not remember. Because yeah, you do then, these things with, like, with muscle memory. You don't think about it at a certain point. Right, yeah. You don't even really know that you're doing it. Like, if somebody asks you why you hit it, it might take you a second to even remember for a second. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, Mars making it through that level after taking damage is so impressive because this is like the most so stressful nervous. level in the whole game, pretty much. Yeah, super yeah. nice drop kick on the last to Hammer Bro 2. One thing that is really, really important about Mario 1 and Lost Levels um, is that the mechanic in Mario is that uh, when the game checks whether you stomped an enemy, the only real thing that it cares about is whether Mario is falling. So you can go face first into a bullet bill or any other kind of, you know, hazard that Mario is able to jump on. And if you're moving downward, you win. So when you're trying to jump over a hammer, bro, if you are trying to jump over it and you see that it jumps, you need to immediately recognize that. And what you do is you release A so that Mario starts dropping and then you collide with them and you win the exchange. Yep. It's like one of those things you don't even know is like, takes a lot of skill to do when you watch it. You're like, oh yeah, he just landed on it. But no, that's actually really tough to do. Ooh, yeah, Ooh, that's that troll hammer, bro. <laughs> it jumped Dude, up into his feet, which, so you know, nervous. might look like that's a good thing. Yeah, it might look <laughs> good that it jumped up into his feet, but that made him land right next to the pit. Like, you know, you're kind of expecting to sail over it, land, and then jump over the pit. Uh, but right, that causes him to, uh, to fall a little further. So, now yeah. we're on to Lost Levels. This is the notoriously difficult sequel to Super Mario Bros. And Mars, you're playing as Luigi. Uh, yeah, what, I What's am. the reason behind your, your preference on Luigi? Well, Mario is my main character in this game, but I also am kind of fluent with the Luigi speedrun, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to show both Mario and Luigi off. So we're going to be doing Luigi this round. Oh, that, yeah. Makes perfect nice. sense. Yeah, so Luigi is able to jump higher, but he's also kind of more slippery on his feet, uh, which is a mechanic that, or a property of Luigi that kind of they carried into a lot of other Mario games after this, but it actually started right away uh, in this game. And so he also accelerates just a little bit more slowly, um, and but, but a lot of the time that's made up for by the fact that his insane jumping is able to route, actually get through levels with different routes that are uh, a little little bit faster in some cases. Yeah, actually the record right now for any percent is faster with Luigi. So yeah, it's, it is really cool to see the differences and believe it or not, the Famicom version, he's way slipperier. Like it's so, it's worse to control him. So they did him a solid in this version and made it a lot nicer to control. Like he's a little bit more like Mario and I don't really mind playing as him on the SNES. Yeah, and that is a good uh, uh, thing to point out, too, is that, like, so this is the All-Stars version, which is slightly different. This game was originally only on the Famicom disc system, uh, but then the original game also, the 8-bit version, as well as the others, um, they are remarkably similar in these 16-bit remakes for All-Stars, but they're, they're slightly different in some key ways, and the big thing for Mario 1 and Lost Levels is that the Piranha Plants have bigger hitboxes. Uh, so it's a lot, you know, in the original, you were kind of able to go right through the top half of them, uh, but you cannot do that in this one. Right, yeah, because, yeah, you watch someone play on the Nintendo, and you're like, oh, they're just going through the enemies. This isn't fair. Like, it's just easy. In this game, no. Like, you will die if you even get close to it. But you have no hope. Yeah, the upside to it is if you are playing a category like Warpless where, where it's fast it's fast to get firepower, um, it makes them a lot easier to shoot with fireballs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't, it's, it's not like a bad change for that reason. There's some levels where it's so difficult to actually shoot the Prana plants, but this, it's like a breath of fresh air coming from the Fabcom version. Yeah, and then the other big difference too, I, I'd say, is that um, in, on the NES version, uh, or Famicom, if you are running at full speed, the game doesn't, ex you know, the game can only have so many enemies loaded at once. Uh, and so you don't actually see all of the enemies that are in the level because a lot of them just fail to spawn while the Super Nintendo version does not do that. Yeah, it pretty much displays everything. Yeah. And actually this 4-3 that 
Mars just beat. That is one level where it's so much better to be Luigi. Because you don't really have to worry about... The bullet bills spawn in random locations based on when you get to that level. And you can avoid them a lot easier with Luigi. You can take like the upper path where you don't risk dying or slowing down to them. So that's one thing that I really like about Luigi. So speaking of... Oh, and the clouds, yeah. Someone said in chat, like, the clouds, they're so much better on this version with those smiley faces. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, speaking of random, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> as far as, uh, one just kind of generally interesting thing about Super Mario Bros. is the way that, um, that randomization works. Uh, where everything is is frame dependent as far as like what frame it loads in on, but the game has this weird property where it only checks for the end of a level every 21 frames, which means as long as you're buffering right and run, that means that every level kind of resets you to these 21 frame checkpoints, uh, where the RNG is, um, you know, ba basically you only see those 21 frame windows uh, so much more frequently than the other. Um, and so we refer to those as frame rules. And so if you if you watch runs of this game, you're going to hear a lot about frame rules. What frame rule are you on? Because that determines what uh, RNG patterns you're going to see. Yeah, it's like unless you have to move left or something, you will know exactly what to expect. Even from bullet bills or like Bowser patterns, if you're just holding right, you're good to go. And Mars just went for like a super jump. So in this game, if you're closer to walking speed, you get a higher jump from enemies if you're like in the air when you hit them. It, you get a huge jump, especially as Luigi. Like he had to hit two blocks to get up to scale that wall, but with a super jump, you could get up there just from that single jump, which is not an SMB1 and it's only in lost levels, but it's such a cool thing because it kind of comes out of nowhere, I feel like, and you just get a massive jump. There's a, uh, as far as like weird jump physics goes, there's another strange property. I'm not sure if it's actually used in the run anywhere, uh, but whenever you first spawn, Mario's gravity is actually lower until the first time you jump. Now, most of the time it doesn't oh, matter yeah. because you have to jump before you'll ever fall. Uh, but yeah, when you start on like castles, for example, and the very first thing is a staircase going down, uh, his, his, the, the, um, the falling speed is actually different, and if you bounce off of an enemy, you can bounce super high. I honestly completely forgot about that, because it's like so rarely used. I think, I believe 5-4, you, you utilize that. Yeah. Because yeah, I think, it, it, yeah, it otherwise makes, you wouldn't make it. In 4-4, uh, four, four, it makes the intro kind of awkward. Or like, if you buffer mm. A, it makes you jump and then bounce back down and then you can do it normally but that's technically slower than just running forward and having to kind of do the 8-4 opening yeah yeah that is like especially as luigi i find that beginning really tough but 8-1 is like i think that's my most stressful level in this entire run especially without fire like you have to play so well to avoid hammer bros because th that's not really rng you can account for that easily Depending on if you slow down at all, if you're playing it like safe with slowdowns, then you really don't know what they're gonna do. It's it's a very scary level, but Mars got through it, basically no issue. Yeah, and here we are in eight two, which is kind of a puzzle level. Like this level is super super short if you know what to do. Otherwise, it keeps looping. Uh, because yeah, hitting that <laughs> Koopa to to um, reveal the vine uh, is just kind of a tricky maneuver. And then eight three here is like one of my favorite Mario levels, just in general of all time. This, uh, you know, this level is just a, a gauntlet of Lakitu's and Hammer Bros and hidden blocks that are placed in like Kaizo-ish areas, kind of ending with a with a, a hidden block at the end that you have to jump off of. It's it, this is just a crazy, crazy skillful level. Yeah, like on the Famicom, you actually don't have to hit these blocks. Like you immediately can bump into them or jump on them. But yeah, for some reason on this version, they did make you have to activate it. Yeah, and they're they're kind of hidden differently on Famicom as well because the background has a castle texture that they match up mm -hmm. with, while this one is just there in free space. Yeah, I also want to mention for 8-2, they have a star right before the Koopa that you want to bounce on. And like, naturally, you just go and get every star you can when you play through casually. And then you don't think about that you can't complete the level. Like, I don't know how many times I played through that level before realizing what I was supposed to do. It's such yeah. a good troll. Yeah, this this game they definitely uh, they definitely went out with a, all out with a lot of just the weird clever tricks and stuff that a lot of people 
you know, it, it took a lot of inspiration from as far as all the ROM hacks and stuff go. If you want to play the original, the original uh, trolley ROM hack, Nintendo made it themselves. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the section Mars was just said is a puzzle section, which it's kind of hard to tell. But on this version, they actually give you a noise if you get it wrong. But yeah, that uh, that fire bar would disappear if you went the wrong way. So you have to take the low path to get to the right section. And here's and Bruce. I like that he went for the mushroom. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. All right, we're past Bruce. Excellent. <laughs> you love to see it. That Bruce kills so many. Oh, oh, and the cliff. The swag okay. cliff. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> nice. Well, my day has been made. That's all I needed to see. Okay, now for my favorite of the four games. I love SMB2. I've just played yeah, it so much. Yeah, his favorite. Every single character here has different physics. Yeah, I love this game. Like, yeah, every single character can do different things. Like, Mario's actually very average between all the characters. But a unique thing in this game, while well, you can climb things, He's got to try to press up when this potion is near his head and it clips you through the ground. And naturally that takes you further in the level. It's just how it works. It's one of those cl this th tricks that goes by so quickly you can't even explain it. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. And so this ladder clip on the NES version, it's actually very, it's, it's very consistent and easy. But this one you have, I think, two frames to do it. Like it's very tough on this version. So I respect that he went for it, but it's it's really hard to get. Yeah, it's been giving me trouble recently. So I thought I'd go for it. Yeah, I mean, it's just really hard to do consistently. Yeah. This Birdo shoots eggs about every four seconds, so getting that clip would have saved them about four seconds. And that's kind of what the goal is in this whole game, is getting to Birdo as fast as possible so you don't lose, like, an additional four seconds. Mars, it, it looks like the weight of the moose on your hat is making you have to play with your head tilted back, like, to counteract the, the moose. How's that working out? Working out good. I'm just trying to allow the people to see my eyes because I think it kind of makes it hard to see my face sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this moose hat is awesome. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the moose hat. Also, keys are the only object you can bring through doors. So that's like the cool thing about choosing Luigi there is a, it's a little bit faster than Toad because you can bring a key right to Birdo, get two hits from one drop, and yeah, it's super convenient. Yeah, we are just slightly delayed, so if we say something like after it happens, just a tiny bit of delay, but trying to keep up with that. So Toad oh, is, a, is a really preferable speedrun character for this game because he actually runs faster when he's carrying a heavy object, that being like one of the big vegetables or an enemy or a potion or a key or something. Uh, so yeah, he runs super fast. Yeah, that, and you're going to see that a lot in this game. And actually, the unique thing about the, the SNES version is that we, we do any percent save and quit. So you go to World 4 just so you can save and go back to World 3. And then there's a there's a faster route. Like, it saves, I mean, man, it's like 40 seconds just to do this route. It's super good compared to the NES route. It's much easier, too. Yeah, yeah it is a lot and easier. easier. <laughs> yeah, perfect. For the best of both worlds, it's so <laughs> good. And I like that you didn't throw the potion onto that vase because it's... Oh, I hate that. You can miss it, and then you have to go through the door and fall down again. Yeah. I don't like that, bro. It's really scary. But I like that Luigi is so good in this level, and you'll see why. But it's so convenient to be Luigi here. All these jumps, you don't have to wait at all. I think it's actually faster to choose Toad technically, but it's significantly harder. Yeah, the super remarkable thing about this game is the way that it's like so many levels are designed in a way that like no matter which character you're playing as, you feel like something as a, about it was designed just for that character, you know? Like there's a lot oh, of jumps yeah. that you can just barely make only with Luigi, right? But then there's something else or that floats like... with Pri Peach. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I love that the way they design this game. There's Yeah, there's a few sections where you can skip like like a minute of the level if you choose Luigi or Peach. 
Oh, and I didn't, I guess this is really the first occurrence of it, but if, if you're climbing a vine or a ladder like Mars just did, and you're holding diagonal up in either direction, you can get a jump off of that. It did, you have like three frames to do that, so it's actually pretty tough, but Luigi, you have seven or eight. It's so much easier as Luigi, so you can kind of mash, you can honestly mash jump and you'll get them. And that's why, that's one reason why we choose Luigi here, because you have a massive vine climbing section, and you can just see him just flying through it. Oh, barely dodging the sniffing bullets, too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Now, for some reason, too, yeah, like, the different characters, like you mentioned, have a different window. Luigi's got the biggest, and I, I want to say Toad has the smallest window, right? Um, actually, they're all the same, except for Luigi. Yeah, the, oh, the other three, weird. Okay. it's the same. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, because... I mean, as far as I know, they're the exact same, but since the SNES has, the SNES controller has two jump buttons, you can hold one jump button and use the other for the actual jumping off the vine and you get more frames to do it. Hmm. So it's kind of easier than the NES version for that reason too. One little thing about these birdos that can shoot either eggs or fire is that they actually shoot fire more often the lower health that they have. Dude, I didn't learn about that for so long, too. That blew my mind. So it's like, that. oh, by the way, there's this, like, this RNG to the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's why, like, people will delay hits depending on, like, if they're trying to grab a fish or something or if they need another egg, they'll hold on to an egg so that it's more likely they get one. Knowledge gained. Now you're going to get record in this category. Yeah. Easy. I need to improve my red birdo. And now we go through the <laughs> learning period where he starts trying to implement it and screwing it up, and it's bad at first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the learning period's so good. <laughs> these blind jump, these pillar jumps stress me out every time. Yeah. I will, it will never stop freaking me out. Like I'm, so, I don't know. I'm pretty good at this game, and I it scares. Like I say, think, seriously think I'm gonna die every time because I just overthink it. This level, you could like tech. Like if you're a task, so if you're a computer playing this level, it's faster as Peach or Princess. It's so difficult. Oh my gosh, never worth it. Oh, another tiny thing about Birdo fights is uh, you're actually, you have iframes while you are picking stuff up. So a lot of the time you'll see uh, runners time their picking up of the toadstool to get the fireball to pass through them, which is the easiest to do with Luigi or Peach, or probably, well, the easiest to do with Peach because she picks things up the slowest. That, yeah, uh, that's a really good point. It's extremely helpful in this. That's another thing where, like, if you play the game, like, constantly, you don't even think about that. And people are like, yeah, so why can you just go through objects all of a sudden? <laughs> game is good. Uh, so what Mars did in the climbing of the chains here to run across the top of the of the stage is that if you, if you climb up the ladder, uh, the game puts you into the room above. But if you jump off the top, if you jump off the ladder or chain or whatever, um, the game doesn't see that you're on a ladder, and so it doesn't load that that higher level, uh, and you can just get on top of the level by doing that, um, and that can skip a large amount of this last level here. It's it's a huge level without doing that. Yeah, and not having to fight Birdo is really convenient. And so this this veggie machine spits out veggies about every four seconds. So and the pattern that like Wart will shoot out bubbles. And that's all consistent, but Wart's position changes based on the frame that you spawn him. So that's kind of one thing you have to react to. But the strat Mars is doing is actually perfect because you don't have to worry about bubbles at all. And if you throw the veggie just right, you get the hit in and it spawns the next veggie. So you get the hit, grab the veggie, and you're just good to go. And that was like a perfect ward fight. Very yeah, nice. you you have to time those throws perfectly because if if you're too early, you can only hit him when his mouth is open. And if you throw too early, then it passes by and then he opens his mouth. If you throw too late, mm -hmm. he shoots a bubble and it actually destroys the vegetable. So every one of those vegetable uh, fr uh, throws was timed pretty precisely. Yeah, I know, that's, that's a super impressive part about it. Or if you throw it a tiny bit too late, the bubble snipes it. Like, yeah, that was super well done. And he was mashing pause in that fight because the, the sound of the pause menu overwrites the fanfare that plays. And when the fanfare plays, you can't move. So you're mashing this so it skips the freezing animation and you can just enter the door immediately, which is only a Super Nintendo thing. Can't do that on the original game, but 
Yeah, yeah. That, it, that's another thing that looks super random if you don't know why he's doing it. Just like dashing start. Trying to lose There's time. also a, another tiny aspect to it is um, that... Uh, it, depending on what revision of the cart that you have, you might be able to pause. Like, some people's cartridges can't pause and unpause that quickly. Uh, and it's due mm -hmm. to, like, a, a patch, essentially, that Nintendo did on on later cartridges of the game. Uh, so yeah, I that's, think that's the all five one, I want to say. Oh, okay. Which... Yeah, which I guess, I don't know if we specified, but this is all four because there's there's a cart that comes with Super Mario World, and that's the fifth game, so we specify all four because we're only playing. You could potentially play all five if you have that cart. And now, I actually don't fully remember, is the all five, was that a uh, US only thing? Yep. Like, oh, I don't know oh. if there's a Japanese version of that one. Yeah. I thought there's like... For some reason, I thought I saw something about a PAL version, and I don't know if that's real or not. <laughs> but yeah, as far as I I'm know, not sure. just US. Because I've like heard people said something about it, but I didn't really see any cards, so that's why I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, I just didn't think that it it, it uh, had come out in Japan. So for Mario 3, um, the big strat for any percent on Mario 3 is to get two whistles because as none of us ever tried when we were kids, it turns out if you use a whistle when you're already in the whistle warp zone, you go straight to World 8. That blew my mind. I could not believe that was how you could beat this game. <laughs> yeah. Also, I saw... I saw you smile, Mars, in the fort when you got a wall jump. That was so good. Yeah, I was proud of that. Like, that's like subpixel dependent. Yeah, I, I think that's like pixel perfect and subpixel dependent, if you can even get it. And it's, yeah, everything about that was amazing. I love, with the tail, it, it seems like so much worse to go for, too. The style. Oh, yeah, yeah one tiny weird version. thing about Mario 3 is uh, if you have a tail, you actually lose, like, a tiny bit of speed every time you jump, yeah? Or is that only in the NES version? No, you're right. Yeah, you're, it's actually significant. If you have P-Speed, you, you, you maintain that speed for a tiny bit when you jump, and then it actually feels significantly slower. So that's why we want to get a Fire Flower in the Navy. But, yeah, it is uh, significantly slower to have the tail throughout the whole game. The four auto scrollers here always remind me of that Faith No More song where they say we care a lot about the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Never thought of, about that. Maybe they're trying to send a message oh, here. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. I don't think this version, I don't think, has like any lag, right, Mars? Or is there like a tiny bit or something? I've, I heard that there might be These a very small amount lag. of lag, but lag is very um, a minor problem compared to the NES versions for all these games. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because the original is, is very laggy in this uh, level, unless you... If you kill the bob bombs in a certain way, it's totally fine, but if you don't, there's a significant slowdown, which I think kind of factors into why you can't just, like, easily get to the hands on, like, the same frame and get no hands. Which even that would be really difficult to do. Oh yeah, hands. Uh, no hands. No hands juice. juice. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you actually had juice prepared for that. I didn't know what you meant by no hands until now. There's hands in this game. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> I've been so confused this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there are three hands that can pull you in. Each one's a 50-50. It just depends on the frame that you run over it. And yeah, you can't do anything about it. You just have to play the level. So that's that's what that's one reason why you either do SMB3 first or second, just to get like the massive RNG out of the way, because you can lose up to a minute just from like if you get pulled in by all three, you have you have no say in it, right? You just have to play it. So that's yeah. one strategy that goes into the routing of this category. You can play any of these games in whatever order you want. You don't have to start with SMB1 and work your way through. But I feel like that's really fun for, like, marathon settings, is to play yeah, through the games in chronological. Good guy Ethan knew to, like, have there be a nice continuity to it for the viewers. <laughs> yeah. That's why we do it. A lot of people do oh, see I you Oh, I said Ethan. Well. I meant to say Mars. You did. I, yeah. I figured, but I wasn't going to say it. Oh, well, it's funny because I did the same thing when I ran this game for a marathon, so I was like, wow, is he really calling back to that one moment? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that, fun to yeah. play it this way. 
<laughs> yeah. All right, hands. What are we gonna get? Zero hands? I mean? Gonna get four hands? I mean, you drank the juice. Yeah, it's gotta work. <laughs> no, no, no more than three. Oh. Ooh, that the teeth. Oh, okay. They let you get across. Ah, oh, that's so mean. I mean, it's cool that's too. Don't get me wrong. That's good actually, because if so we each die, of them then, like, we will go back to the third hand. Yeah, I'm not sure That's if you true. mentioned that uh, it's a it's a 50% chance on each spot, right? On each of the three. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So it's actually pretty, it's pretty nice that he only got one. <laughs> oh, I feel like you would have tasted that. Throwing off yeah. your game. Yeah. So this, the airship is probably the most stressful level in this entire game for me. Oh, I yeah. died here so many times growing up. It's... Unless you have a P-Wing, then it's okay. But, oh, we're just fire dodging the enemies and everything. It's so intense. Yeah, as, as far as auto-scrollers go, it's pretty fast. There's a lot of big jumps where, like, because it's a big jump and it's an auto-scroller, you have to, like, wait for you to be on the left side of the screen so you can jump over to the right. And, yeah. Um, and then if you don't defeat one of these, like, uh, I forget what they're called, these uh, these wrench throwers, uh, you know, they can throw like really... Rocky wrench, yeah. You, they throw like a really super slow moving wrench that just stays on screen <laughs> yeah. forever. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's like it's so painful, but once you learn how to do it well, it's pretty fun. And then these boom yeah. booms, uh, they you you normally have to jump on them three times with like a delay between each one. But with firepower, just uh, just five fireballs uh, gets rid of them. And then if that wasn't enough, their death animation is actually faster when you fire kill them. Also, yeah, I think it saves two or three seconds doing it with fire. And something that's actually like one of the few. Well, the camera in this version is. You get a lot less of view than on the NES, but also if you're above the screen and you try to shoot a fireball, it just doesn't come out here. But on the NES, it does. So the beginning of 8-1, he had to do kind of a different route just to make sure the fireball spawned and did kill the piranha plants. And now on, on the NES version, I want to say also, and maybe I'm thinking of SMB1 here, where if Mario is half it, way in the top of the screen you can't shoot, but if he's all the way above the screen, then he can, or something like that. Oh, I've never tried that, honestly. That's yeah, a good I, question. I mean, I th I thought it worked no matter what. I've never tried that. It might only be SMB1 hmm. that's like that. Yeah, that's a good... It, I do think that's that sounds like SMB1. I'm pretty sure it's fine on SMB3, because I would do like a full jump in that section. So I think that was just SMB1, if anything. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mars is flying through this game, sprinting 8-1 and the rest of it. Yeah. yeah once uh, the the beautiful thing in Mario 3 is once once that P speed gets going and and you can just start soaring through levels, it looks it looks so good. Oh yeah. Ooh, gets the okay. So that that section's really tricky because you have to like you have to get to that door right before the P switch runs out, or else you have to wait a really long cycle. I'm actually not sure how much time it loses, like 15 seconds or something. Like 10 seconds. Yeah, because the there. P switch. Yeah, when the okay. P-switch expires, the door goes away. So you can hit another P-switch and go through the door, sure, but then the treadmill doesn't start until the switch expires. Uh, until the second switch expires, that is. So you want to get through just yeah. before the first one expires so the treadmill takes you right away. Mm-hmm. Nothing like getting all the way to that fort in a warpless run and then missing the door, and you're like, oh, the pain. This super tank's actually really nice if you just stay to the right for the most part. Like, just stay to the right side of the screen and mash B and you're, you're safe. So for SMB3 on NES, uh, as well as Famicom, one interesting difference between the two games is that the, the Famicom version, if you get hit while you have firepower or a Tanuki Tail, you go straight down to small, uh, while in the US version they made it so that you just go into regular big Mario, which is kind of how like all Mario games are after that. Um, question is, on All Stars, on the Japanese version, it does the US uh, NES thing, right? Where, where if, right, if Mars yeah. were to get hit, he would go to regular Super Mario? Yep. Yeah, they, they stuck with that idea after making the U.S. version. 
That's last actually pretty level. interesting for Warpless, though, the Famicom one, because mm -hmm. there's a couple of things you have to do differently. Yeah, last level, let's go. Really solid run, too. Like, super solid. Bowser's Castle, like, if you don't have fire, it, like, it takes so much longer. But with fire, it's pretty good. Oh, oh the clip. elevator clip! Let's go! <laughs> it's too good. And then, oh, but he, oh, but he, he missed oh. the first... <laughs> the first <laughs> every man clip. <laughs> And the, the dunking, actually, I didn't know that would, like, stop you midway through. That's, that's pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, Bowser, oh, man, I'm not sure how many fireballs Bowser takes, but you just gotta mash until he's dead. And on... 35, okay. And actually, on yeah. this version, you want to make Bowser go to the lower section like Mars did, because it's not reliable at all to stand above the door. Like, you typically see people kill him that way if you're standing above the door, but you do not want to do that in this version. It's super risky. But GG, that was really well done. Yeah, Fine. fantastic run start to finish. Nice, you made it. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel good. The worst part about the run was probably SMB1 and getting hit. But other than that, the run went very good. But I'm happy. Yeah. That, that well, was a you, great run. Yeah, you did a terrific job. Mars, do you have any shoutouts or, or any of you uh, shoutouts for anyone? Shoutouts to everyone in the GDQ chat, the commentators Ethan and Dash for joining us here, and everyone who's running the Time Capsule show, pretty much. Of course. You know, I had a question for you, Mars. We had a lot of questions and comments come into the chat about your moose hat, and we want to know how it, like, where you got it, how it came to be in your possession. <laughs> Yeah, so back when my father was very young, he used to go camping and he got a moose hat at a place that he was going to visit. And after all those years, I found it in the shed a couple years back while we were doing a yard sale. So I cleaned it up and I started using it. And yeah, it's just kind of the story of the moose hat. And now we are here at GDQ. <laughs> <laughs> the moose hat made it to GDQ too. I like that. Yeah, well, thank hat. you so much, uh, Mars and, and uh, Dash, Ethan, for being here. Uh, if all of you enjoyed the run, please make sure you follow uh, everybody here. I put it in the the Twitch chat. That's Mars zero two uh, with two underscores, Ethan RCA and Dash Retro. Uh, it was a pleasure having all of you here today to show off uh, Super Mario All Stars. Um, but yeah, we are going to set up for the next game. But before we do, I just want to say that from now until July 15th, GDQ's revenue from subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered after taxes will all be donated by GDQ to Doctors Without Borders uh, in preparation for Summer Games Done Quick, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, also, did you know that Games Done Quick Highlights is a channel that features all of our highlights uh, from the GDQ Hotfix shows, and if you are interested in that, you can use the exclamation mark highlights command in Twitch chat to learn more about it. We will be right back with Link's Awakening, so don't go away. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Games Done Quick channel. I am your host, Smooth Operative, and you are watching Time Capsule. And if you are watching this on YouTube from the future, go to gamesdonequick.com. Sorry, go to twitch.tv slash games done quick if you're interested in seeing our content live starting most uh, weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And if you are watching us right now on Twitch, you can go to youtube.com slash games done quick to see any runs that you might have missed. Uh, but right now we are all set up for the last run of the evening, and that is Link's Awakening. I have Mighty Mouth here and Phantom Matt. So, uh, Mighty, you want to take it away with introductions? Sure. Hello, I'm Mighty Mouth. I'm going to be running Link's Awakening Warpless. It's like Link's Awakening DX, except it's black and white, and we can go faster because we can go out of bounds a little bit. All right, like it. And my commentary, Phantom Matt. Hello, I'm Phantom Matt. What Mighty said applies, except that we have other reasons why we go fast. <laughs> it's because we can ignore a lot of the game. Because <laughs> it's dumb. Yes. Well, thank you both True. so much for being here. Uh, Mighty Mouth, whenever you are ready, we can start the timer. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Good luck. 
Okay, now we're starting out here because we washed ashore on a deserted island and we're going to get a shield. Oh, there's... Yes, for, for context, uh, <laughs> Mighty has some uh, spectators have a dog that cough. His... <laughs> yeah. It's a doggo commentators. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we are grabbing our shield from Terran, who picked us up off the beach, along with Marin. Uh, essentially kidnapping us and leaving our uh, sword down on the beach, because, you know, swords are pointy dangerous weapons. And, you know, until we showed up, monsters didn't exist, so, you know, we might be a little dangerous, who knows? Yeah, like, <laughs> our appearing on the island is when all of these monsters started happening. Very... We made this island terrible. We're the monsters here. <laughs> but, uh, Mighty moving uh, in a way where he's... Oh, can you get the sword early with us? Yeah. As soon as the text ends, you can get the sword. If you do a damage boost off of the spiny there, you can get even faster, but it's not really good when we need to grab rupees like we're doing right now. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is have the rupee lands on both Link and the shield at the same time so that the game will think, oh, well, it landed on his shield and also his, like, uh, body, so it'll collect it twice for me. Uh, like, I just collected two rupees there, so. It's called rupee duping, and we're trying to get ten rupees or as close to ten as we can get because we need, uh, tend to do something that's also pretty novel for the Zelda series. We're just going to start stealing stuff. Yeah. Because again, let's steal a shovel. We're, we're the monsters here. We steal the shovel and we immediately die for our sins. Uh, the shopkeeper is oh. basically Emperor Palpatine and nukes us with force lightning. Yeah. Okay, and now we're going to technically buy these bombs. Yeah. Technically, because we sort of agreed to pay for them, but then save and quit before, you know, it actually got paid for. Yeah, it works sort of like the, um, the health system in the Mother games, if you guys uh, recognize that, where it ticks down, but we never actually start ticking after we've purchased the bombs. So we get it for free, but we still need yeah. as many rupees as it costs in order to start it. And, uh... Now we got powder from the massively easy crane game. Easy, every Much time. better than whatever they did in the remake. Uh, uh. Uh, this and actually skips a significant portion of what we need to do in the uh, mysterious forest. Mighty walking into Madame Miyamio's house to set a save point. And now we get to talk to the owl. Lovely. He's hooting about some prophecy. I don't know. See, the dog thinks it doesn't make any sense either. Oh, I poked the off one. That's fine. So the first thing, this is the first major trick that we're gonna get to do in the run. We're gonna place two bombs on sequential frames and then hop off screen. What that does is it um, it causes the cutscene to be triggered without ever needing specific things for it. Uh, we call that a bomb trigger and it lets us skip so much work. Yeah. So we gotta skip a cutscene there and then I skipped another cutscene because I saved and quit after collecting the tail key which is going to open the tail cave. Okay. There we go, opening the tail cave from the side with Link's noodly arms. Yeah. Uh, he spent a little time in Uzumaki world, so he's got, like, spiral arms. You know, it's okay. Oh no, why would you do this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna get a damage boost there and collect the key. And what you're gonna see me doing a lot is opening the save and quit menu basically every time that I open a chest. And that skips the text because text moves slow as molasses in this game. It's terrible. Now 
almighty bumping these spinies into oh, what, are, what are those spinies are the ones on the beach right i think so i call them ottomans <laughs> Uh, Cause it's faster to bump them instead of going over and slashing them. Uh, doing a little walk around to get the one of the most broken items in the game, the rock's feather, which allows us to jump in a 2D game. This dangerous stuff we're doing here. Oh yeah. Now, with this feather, we can. So, one thing, it's faster to jump diagonal than it is to walk diagonal. So you'll see me doing that. And oh. I nearly ruined that. Oh, oh, my lord, I keep ruining it. So what Mighty's trying to do here is clip into the wall, and then jump up, and then fire... Uh, use a weapon away from it, or... Uh, there are different variations of doing that, which allows him to trick the game into thinking that he's on the ledge, which is what all the walls and dungeons are made out of. Because why bother making walls when we already have perfectly good ledges? That is known as a super jump. And you can do that with the bow, you can do that with a sword if you move properly. Uh, you can do it with nothing except the feather. And now here is Moldorm, hardest boss in the game. Uh, true. Takes those holes are no joke. Four hits to kill. Uh, getting hit takes you down by a heart. You can only pretty much have three hearts here. Uh, and getting knocked into the hole resets your progress. But he's dead, Mighty's pro, and we get the full moon shell. Yep. And I almost did something really bad because I was setting <laughs> myself up to do an ICS. <laughs> and I can explain why we cannot do an ICS on this one. When you collect an instrument, it sets flags. And in most cases, that doesn't matter. But there is a specific flag that we need to get, which is the children telling us that Bow Wow was stolen so that we can get Bow Wow so we can enter Dungeon 2. Wait, wait Bow Wow gets stolen in this game? Uh, I suppose he does. I just thought the Moblin took him out for a walk. You know, oh, I, never, yeah. I never actually talked to those kids. You know, they have this whole thing oh, yeah. where you walk up and they go blah blah blah, but I always just push press the B button and it just skips their text. Only yeah. works in the Japanese versions. That's how you get rid of children. You just, uh, you, press just the B button. you just press B and they'll stop talking to you. It's very useful if you have someone uh, crying at you or telling you that there's something important, like my dog's down a well. Mighty, you know, mighty, that's press awful. B. I was trying to go for a lassie joke. Yes. I think it's backwards. I think it was. <laughs> oh my. Uh, so, like we said, the Moblins kidnapped Bow Wow, apparently, and have him in this cave where we now have to fight a series of Moblins, and then the Moblin King right here. Gonna commit some rage aside. After a few attacks, he's gonna ram into the wall. If he doesn't hit Mighty or his sword, which, that's, that hitbox is pretty big. Uh, he oh, yeah. bonks himself, gets into a state where he can slash him, and it's like, what, eight hits, generally, to kill him? Mm -hmm. And don't adjust your dial. This is, uh, this is still Zelda, but that is, in fact, the chain chomp in my Zelda yeah. game. He's very cute, very helpful, except when he's not. Yeah, so we're gonna... Is... He's a... Clip through the rock with a... Text box? Yeah, it's, it's something interesting like that. Basically, we're clicking yeah. on the wall, and then the, the text box pushes us a little bit further forward. And we use that to just slip on through without having to go all the way around. So now Mighty's just going to burn all of his powder, because we don't need that stuff anymore. Powder's awful. Powder's bad. Uh, mushrooms are where it's at. And with mushrooms, you can fly over pits. That's technically the only place where we need uh, powder in the entire game, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Technically. It's got... I got a clip. Sorry. It's got another use in the uh, other version of the game. But that's that's all we got for the powder on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, Dungeon 2 is pretty, pretty standard fare. Just running through. Jumping over spikes. Wow, this, this really is just a Mario game, isn't it? We're jumping over pits and spikes, 
We saved the chain chomp. Yeah, that's a that's a high knocks, and the high knocks dies really quick to the arrows, just like the the rolling bones did in Dungeon One. Because that's we're, my we're not supposed to have the bow right now. We're really strong. Yeah. Oh, here's some booze. Also, you know. Yeah, real, real in a Zelda game. Real casual Zelda enemies. So we're getting the power bracelet, and instead of finishing the dungeon, we're just gonna get out. We don't, we don't need yeah, to finish there's... this. No reason to really do Dungeon 2 yet. Then uh, 2 comes at the end. But right now we're going to go grab what we actually need. So we needed the powder to light some torches, but what's really important, because we're going to skip some other stuff, we need the mushroom. You can't have a mushroom in the game while having powder. Because yeah. everybody knows powdered mushrooms just taste terrible. So now we're gonna. Now we're going. No, go ahead, Mighty. Now we're going to go over to the other side of the map to uh, have a hole on the map, and that hole will allow us. Having it on the map will allow us to travel to it later after Dungeon 3. So this is normally where uh, we explain what the category means. Because we're gonna walk over to this screen, and that's a warp point where you can use that to get around various parts of the island. But wait, this is warpless. That means we can't use that. Um, warpless in this case means no wrong warps. And it has a few other distinctions that we're not allowed to do. Uh, but wrong warp is basically where we can't go in a door and have every entrance has to lead where it's supposed to go. So, for example, if you're somewhat familiar with other categories of this game. We can go into the, the back of the doghouse and enter some sort of deep, dark, mysterious, inverse world that's just awful. Uh, we can't do that in this category because it's broken. So... Oh, ah, that's fine. So what Mighty's gonna do is he's gonna use the mushroom on this pit to go all the way down uh, and then just use the ground that's underneath the menu to transition downwards. Yeah, you know, casually falling into the little villa backyard garden without having to go through Canalet Castle. And then we're going to use a leaf again to fall down outside of the little garden. So we're, what we're doing right there is we're clipping into the, the bush and we transition, but there's an object where we're supposed to be transitioning, so it presses us down uh, past until we're onto a tile where we can actually land. Which, convenient for us, just lands us right where we need to go. And again, you get to see Link's spindly arms. Nice noodly arms, putting in stuff backwards. Yeah. Now this is Dungeon 3. Uh, dungeon 3. Uh, are we getting a uh, piece of power here? Yes. So Mighty's going to be racking up kills uh, in order to get to a certain number. And once he does, which is going to be in like three rooms, yeah, he's going to get uh, one of the two drops of the game. That's one, the Guardian Acorn. That's awful. We don't want that because it just halves your damage. Oh. But we're not taking hits unless it's on purpose. Uh, however... We are going to be getting a piece of power, that one, uh, which doubles our attack power, increases our knockback, and increases our movement speed. Now Mighty's just going to do a little super jump here, tank off of that Dodongo, and that is Dodongo skip, doing a little super jump right there, get the boots early, without ever having to kill those bosses. Very nice. Oh, I'm wasting arrows. That's not good. Ah, the second one got it. That's no. fine. Bombs. That's what I don't want to waste. And we get the master key for the dungeon. Easy. Yep. Easy. Very fun. There is a skip there that you can do that I have never found a way to actually do with like a shield super jumping off of a Salfos. Oh, yeah. Here's the, another. The, the French press, as we call it. <laughs> I ugh, I have tried it before. Not not an easy one. No, no. 
And now we're gonna kill these things by dashing into them. And run here. Then we're going to uh, simulate mitosis. Just sort of punch this guy a bunch of times in his eyes. Then uh, split the cell. Now we're going to go ahead and kill it. And you're going to get to see an ICS. So let's hope that this works. Yeah, so this is a this is a 50-50% chance. Mighty has to pause as he's picking up the uh, instrument and then save and quit out. And what this means is there's this long cutscene that we've already seen with Dungeon 1 where uh, the instrument plays this whole little song and then it has a little message from the wind fish telling us, hey, you should go here. This is where you should go here. Next. Uh, we skip that. And it saves like 30 seconds for each one we can do. Mm -hmm. We just can't do the one for Dungeon 1 because that would be bad. And we wouldn't yeah. be able to actually do the rest of the game. Every other ICS is fair game. Mm -hmm. There's... Uh. There's it. It's frame perfect from Nitros. Now, we're going to get my health really low because... They're... Oh my god. <laughs> Bow wow! You were, you were saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was going to get my health really low because there's an owl and I don't want to listen to the owl lecture to me again. So I was going to die against the lever, but now I have to die against the cactus. But first, we have to do walrus skip. So we're going to bump against this wall here to get right up against the transition. Then we're going to do a bomb trigger with some precise movement afterwards. So that way we do the trick to wake up this walrus, which normally needs Marin following us, but all we got is a dumb chain chop. Uh, mm -hmm. if we're still on the screen and the next part of this sequence happens, the game's, uh, locked up. <laughs> that, that would be bad. Uh, hey, we did we it. get it, it's easy. So we just transition off the screen before the rabbit comes on to take Marin away, and, uh, we just get to move. But we can't use our items, we can, or our menus, we can only move. So we need to die in order to get yep. that stuff back. So now we've got to go, uh, I think there's, there's supposed to be a mini boss here, but I don't know if I'll actually see it. I think he's busy co-starring in Doom. Or Doom. Yeah. Maybe, True. Maybe, True. maybe he went to Saturn and, uh, was that worm that, uh, was in Beetlejuice. But with, yeah. uh, with the absent worm dead and us collecting the uh, Dungeon 6 key. No, it's Dungeon 4 key, my bad. Dungeon 4 key. It's, it's been a while. We're just going to take off. Uh, skipping the cutscene with the owl that was supposed to happen as we were leaving the desert. Yeah. And now we're going straight to Dungeon 4. I can count. Yeah. I know what numbers are. So stick the key in the keyhole, open up the angler's tunnel. Mm -hmm. And now in, other, in the other version of this game, uh, Link's Awakening BX with the Game Boy Color, we'd go all the way around the mountain. Uh, in this one, we're more reasonable. We just hop over here and hop up these stairs. And there we are, bam. So another, another way you can do a super jump is by holding diagonal against a movable block. And uh, I'll do that a few times. Hold a shack jump. Ooh, look at that damage boost. Very nice. That was neat. Um, gas tonight, mighty. And so we do that. Fun times is when I forget to open dungeon four, and I sort of get stuck in an unending loop of falling into water because I go up the stairs before the water strength. Always remember to open your dungeons. It's very important. A rather tricky jump here. Easily done. Slightly tricky. Okay, now we're going to go face an enemy that has killed me more times than I care to count. That's Stalfos? Uh, actually, also, that's Stalfos. Definitely, that's Stalfos. <laughs> that's Stalfos killed me. Uh, here is. Yuball? Yuball. And. This takes four hits. Easy. You trap him in the middle. With here. Been attacked. 
But sometimes, you know, you like to get fancy. You jump in the wrong time, and then you're like, oh, Q-Ball got away from me. Oh no, Q-Ball hit me. And it does a heart of damage every time, and then, oh no, I'm dead. All of a sudden, Q-Ball isn't much of a joke. Yeah. But for... Uh, there's a room to get a uh, staircase to the keys, but we don't need a staircase because we've got uh, magic jumps. Yeah. So we're gonna let's clip into this wall and do a super jump, clank off of that pea hat with our sword, and just hop right up here. Easy peasy. Getting the boss key, and we also got a flipper earlier. That's gonna be just, just a little important. You know this boss is underwater, which allows yeah. us to breathe underwater, too. Who knew? Uh, that's because Link's part mermaid. You get to learn that in the extended uh, Zelda lore in uh, Oracle of Ages. Oh yeah, because he gets some mermaids, he does. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, spin flash and two bomb arrows. Uh, yeah, bomb arrows, because we can shoot those by pressing bomb and arrow at the same time. And the boss is dead, and Mighty gets a second ICS. Oh, Second ICS, God. let's go. Oh, be still my heart. I know, right? This is so exciting. Uh, now, so, way back when, this game didn't have a warpless category, and instead you had just a no wrong warp, no out of bounds category, which meant that you had to get that dungeon for ICS, because the next dungeon you would go to, you would activate a ghost that's a ghost side quest. But if you do the ICS, it doesn't activate because those flags that were super important to have active for Dungeon 1, very important not to have active after Dungeon 4. It's not the case anymore because it's warpless and we don't have to worry about that. Life it's so nice to get the ICS though. Oh yeah. It's free 30 seconds. You saved 60 seconds, Mike. Oh wow. Just Here for free. Go. Oh, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Oh! Did it. Oh my ah, goodness. That's obstacle skip. You can skip the obstacle by jumping around it if you're in the right frame. Not right frame, the right position. It's not that hard. That's. But... Mm, mm. <laughs> I don't know about that, boss. Oh, right. This. Uh, so, in the other version of this game, you have to do some really complicated stuff to jump yeah, there's over. This... There's a whole pit and everything. Yeah. I could show it to you. Uh, I'd say look I at want the pit. To. I'll look at the pit? Educational okay, we'll purposes, look pit. looking at the pit. Uh, we can just uh, sure. do a little shimmy on what would technically be out of bounds. And just... Yeah, see, this is the pit that I would have to jump over in LADX, but instead we just uh, jump onto the cliff, you know? Yeah. Technically, it's walkable tiles. It all works. So. So now, because we can count 100%, instead of going to Dungeon 5, we're gonna go to Dungeon 7. Yeah, Dungeon 7 is the next logical uh, number that comes after 4. Uh, now, if you're wondering why can't you jump over and go to those stairs, you're coming right back to them. It's technically not the same room, as you see there are no enemies here, and if I would have jumped over and went to that side, I would have gone somewhere completely different. It is a bad warp. Oof. Yeah. It's a it's this whole thing where this game is organized by systems. Yeah. Which is why we have a category in the other game called the most, uh, system transition or long warp, where each area is sectioned up, and that's two separate sections there. Now Bow Wow just ate a cutscene. Is that a thing uh, we can do? Yeah, cutscenes can be eaten. Uh, because they act like enemies in certain parts, I guess. Yeah, they're, they're entities that can be consumed by Bow Wow, because Bow Wow eats everything. Uh, it's low-key Bow Wow's an elder god. You know, just sort of chilling on an island. Why can I not do the super jump? Because it's uh, Oof, late. I'm going too late. Uh... There you go. You have to make it late so that you can land onto the bricks, but I was going a bit too late and not actually performing the jump. Yeah, uh, so that's, a, that's an anti-Kirby, not a Kirby, an anti-Kirby. 
Yeah. And now we're gonna do some, hopefully, spicy move. And do some bomb triggers. Oh, yeah. We've gotta... Trigger the collapse of this... These four pillars. It... Makes the... Tower come down lower. Ooh! We got oh, it! Yay, goodness. let's go. No. I'm gonna be honest with That'll... you. Uh, the fact that you had ten bombs going into that scared me. <laughs> it, uh, you know why that scared me too. Cause, because, uh, if you mess that up, you have, uh, one shot to recover. Uh, well, no, you can then leave. There are bombs in the area, you just... Yeah, there, to, there are bombs you know. up here, but it's not as fluid. True, it's not so as true. Fluid. Oh, this is... This is an awful thing. So you have to get to like the very edge of the pixel here, and then hope that a Goomba comes the right way and do a naked super jump. Yeah, this is the uh, the super jump where we don't have anything on us. I might get stuck in the wall a little bit, but just use the boost to dash up. That is called Goomba Surf. Yeah. Don't like that trick. <laughs> this Goomba's it's a uh, twenty five percent chance for the Goomba to go in the right direction. Not fun. No. Especially when the Goombas just decide, I'm going to not go there for like 20 times. Uh, now we're going to fight an eagle. I go down so that the floor is the bottom of the ladder. No idea why it's the bottom of the ladder, but it is the bottom of the ladder. It just works out that way. Yeah. Uh, because I'm playing on the 1.0 version, I get a... Just leave because Ooh, the door extends up. Ah, you can't win them all. No. If this were the, the DX version, we'd have a color bomb right there, though. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, well, it's not a 7 out of 7 ICS, but you can't get every ICS. Look, 6 if out of 7. If that happened, then. 6 out of 7 is cooler than 7 out of 7, let's be honest. Oh, so true. Okay, now we're going to do this. Open the save and quit menu so that we can control where we fall and not fall into the hole into the bottom of the waterfall. Because I gotta go to the other side of the mountain now. Just a mountain climb. Mountaineers in this run. Mm-hmm. It's, you know. So, I can to see that guy. Oh. So normally, uh, when you're doing this in normal gameplay, you come up here after you've done a whole bunch of other things. You've rescued a, a rooster that allows you to cross giant gaps. You've got a hook shot that allows you to do much the same. Uh, you can rescue Marin after having a date, but we choose not to, instead leaving her on the mountain to suffer a terrible fate. That's okay. Uh, she's gonna die in the end anyway. This whole mountain, everything on this island's a dream, so and she's okay. Very specifically, we've already died in this run, so yeah. <laughs> So, Mighty has come to the Pit Witch Kills, which you have to do a dash jump across, uh, use the mushroom to buffer down, and then jump up. Uh, doing it first try, making it look easy, that is not easy at all. There. It, it is a very tight jump. If you press up too soon, then you fall. If you jump too soon and then press up, then you don't get far enough. It's, it's tight, but with practice it gets easier. There are still times where it sucks. Now we're gonna clip into the wall here, that way we don't get, like, knocked back from those flames and just not worry about having a powerful shield. Why Why do we need half the things that this game tries to give us, honestly? We got bombs, so we got boots, we got a feather. Yeah, so, yeah, you would normally need an ocarina and a song to wake this guy up, but you don't need any of that. Just walk through them. There we go. See? Now we're in dungeon eight. Easy. That's how you get. That's how you get to a dragon horde. Just walk past it. Carefully. While it's still waking up. Yeah. It's still got the sleep in its eyes. All right, gonna do another little naked super jump here. Bomb the wall. Bomb this wall. Then we'll jump and shoot an arrow in a statue to get a key. Makes sense. The statue has an eye, and there's a giant arrow pointing at it. Yeah. Uh, much, much more intuitive than 
some other things coming up later. Uh, this this game, man. Uh, oh, I forgot that I <laughs> forgot had jumped. Open the wall. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There we go. Now we're going to do a super jump here to jump up here so that we don't have to. I don't even know how to get there. Fun fact about me, I played this game like once in my childhood and I do not know how to play it normally because I've spent most of my time just speedrunning it. Yeah, the same thing applies for like Dungeon Set. This game is just a lot easier if you can learn the speedrun. You don't have to oh, remember true. half the stuff. But now we're gonna do a little uh, super jump with some really specifically aligned pixels to avoid fighting uh, a mini boss down there whose name escapes me, and we're gonna get the magic rod. It's Blano. He's a penguin. No one wants to fight penguins. Thank you. Also, Dungeon 7 was the last heart container that we're going to get because now we've got magic, and magic means that we don't really have to fight anything ever again. We will, but we don't have to technically. We're gonna we're gonna burn a lot of stuff. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, that's a thing that you can do. You can just sort of like fall down ladders. But yeah, see here, when you're on the edge of a screen, you can uh, push, you can use the magic rod and pause. And while it's pausing, that scroll will like have the magic continue to flow and it'll overload the sprites. That will allow you to like deload what's ever in the next room. So we were supposed to fight cue ball. We ignored fighting cue ball. Then we went back into the room. The door pushed us down. And because we were on the right side of the door, we landed into that second room, which is a filler room for dungeon eight because every dungeon has like filler rooms in it. The filler rooms in Dungeon 8 happen to have the level 2 power bracelet. Since we now have the level 2 power bracelet, the game believes that we have done Dungeon 6, which means we won't get the ghost cutscene with side quest, which is why we don't have to worry about the ICS in Dungeon 4 anymore. If that was confusing, don't worry, it is. Yeah, so essentially the door pushes, pushes us down into the next room. A lot of people would call that a warp. It's more of a slide, honestly. Mm -hmm. And with our magic rod, we saw it earlier, uh, we're just going to get to prevent a bunch of stuff from existing on the side. Because it's all a dream anyways. Yeah. Nothing, now, nothing really exists here. In this part of the game, it's going to get really laggy because we're not really supposed to have Bow Wow here. And while we're running, each dust sprite is like a sprite and Bow Wow has like chains that are all his sprites plus his main body sprite and it's gonna look really bad and you're gonna think well you know they got that deloading thing why not deload fun fact the lag that you get from deloading is actually so laggy that it outlags this lag it's i think it might be maybe frames faster if you do it the first try and like every good fire emblem player knows if you want to beat a knight you just use magic And that nets us the Dungeon 6 key, contrary to what I said earlier. Yes, this is the face key for the face shrine. It has a face, you know, technically. You know, the shrine. The shrine with the face on it. Uh-huh. So now we're just going to run through here. Every time Bow Wow kills an Armos, it's going to drop an arrow. Guaranteed, because normally arrows are the only thing that we have that can kill them. Yeah, so I want to collect the arrows because I need a lot of arrows for the final boss. Okay, Bow Wow, blocking my magic. I see how it is. Yeah, Bow Wow's a traitor. And, uh, Sometimes he's just very angry. Doesn't like to cooperate a lot. Uh, we have completed mm. dungeon one, three, four, seven. So four dungeons have been completed. We're halfway through the game. Yeah. We're going to dungeon six now. Because, again, we can count. Yeah. Now we're... There's a way for Bawa to eat this, too, but it's technically slightly faster. 
to do the deload, and you know, I just I love deloads. They're really fun. Yeah, we normally we'd shoot a bomb arrow into that side, uh, so that way back the that scene entity can spawn somewhere where Bow Wow can eat it. Uh, mm -hmm. But now, now in this dungeon, uh, we're supposed to get the level two power press. We got that back in dungeon eight, so we don't even need to go anywhere near the left side of this dungeon anymore. We can just go straight to the boss. Uh, well, we still have to go to the left side of the dungeon to get to the boss. Nah, I don't know. I would consider that the left side of the dungeon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so this has a chest that you throw a pot at it. And it opens it for some reason. Yeah, they, uh, uh, doesn't the statue say that? Yes, the statue does say that. But who collects statue beaks, honestly? Not even beaks in this game. They're not beaks? No, they're not beaks. Oh. They're tablets. Oh, right. You wouldn't know because you'd never see one, Mighty. Because look, I you never, just got. Oh my it's there. lord. There it is. We just saw it! <laughs> okay. Okay, now, so, yeah, now we, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. I was too far away and didn't below the tablet, but now I did. And now we want to get rid of this room because it's really laggy. And we want to get rid of this room because I hate whiz robes. And then I don't want to get rid of this room because it'll give me fairies before facade. A facade's a very terrible boss. Very hard. Uh, Incredibly. We good. might catch him on his. Uh, oh, it looks like he's on break. We're good. Yeah. No problem. We can also do. Oh, the we can. And that's another ICS. Mighty getting set for that six out of seven. I'm liking it. Oh, so much fun. Ooh. Wrong thing. There we go. Now, there was an owl there, but we can also get rid of owls. Like, really, this magic rod is just such a multi-use tool. It's like the Swiss Army knife of Zelda games. We're ignoring a lot of the game, as promised. Yeah. So now, while we're right here, uh, we're going to hop down to Dungeon 5, where we're going to continue mm -hmm. skipping just as much of it as humanly possible. Oh, so much. This is actually probably the best Dungeon 5 that you can play in any of the categories of any of the games. Absolutely. There are, uh, there are categories. There's the normal game where you have to go running around chasing uh, a Master Stalfos who has stolen the hook shot. Uh, there is the, the Hundo version of Link's Awakening DX where we just uh, pull a key into a different room and cause the hook shot to fall. But, uh, my, my favorite does happen to be Warpless. We don't have to fight any of the Master Selfos, nor do we have to get the hookshot at all. So, we collect the keys we need to get to the boss key, and then we leave by going to the boss. The shame we can't collect the rupees that are up at the top of this second room, too, so we could just say that we've collected our money and we've passed go. <laughs> Oh, I think it's not fast to do this, but this is what I always do. I don't want to see these Stelfos, they're annoying. It's fine, they jump. I don't want to see their master, they're annoying either, too. Mighty, you can't be annoyed by everything. <laughs> I can be annoyed by as much as I want to deload in this game. <laughs> okay. Now these bloopers are annoying, but I can't actually deload them, it's a shame. But I got the boost. You can set them on magic. I can. But that would require oh, that would be slow. Yeah. Oh. So now we're gonna do a nice little Ooh. dash jump there. Grab the boss key without ever needing the hook shot. Yep. And then you may ask yourself, yep. well, don't we need the hook shot to fight the boss? My response to that is what boss? Why am I doing this now? I don't need this. Why I'm not going to put the <laughs> key. <Mighty. laughs> okay, there we go. Hey, there we go. That's it. No, not yet. Yeah. Boots come after. And now we come to the basement here. We'll just we'll just play a little game. Take out the blooper. Again, this this is Mario enemies and our Zelda game. Yeah. 
My favorite thing that happens is when there's a fireball on the very edge of the screen and you uh, transition and the fireball comes with you. It's neat. Oh, the great burning and all the... Same thing you could do with bombs, too, I think. Okay. It's like we said, oh. what boss? Yeah, bosses. Wall snake got lost. And there go another ICS. These another are ICS, you love to see it. These are 50 50% cha 50 chances, right? Each one? Uh, no. But you just have to pause frame perfectly on it. And then you get it. There's like a 50-50 chance if you miss it, then it'll be like frame roll dependent. That's but otherwise, as long as you pause on it properly, you'll get it. And now we're just going to uh, finish everything up. So as we counted, uh, totally normally for you, it was one, three, four, seven, seven, six, six five. Five. Now we're going to And then eight. we go eight <laughs> and two. Yeah, that's how we count. Sorry, I got a little lost. It's been a while since I've done my numbers. Math is hard. Don't we, don't we all associate with that nowadays, especially when we're dreaming? Nobody wants to do arithmetic while they're unconscious. I don't <laughs> want to do arithmetic even when I am conscious. <laughs> see, see, there oh. we go. <laughs> ICS's uh, instrument cutscene skip. There is a cutscene associated with instruments, and we want to skip it. So if you pause while you're landing on it, you can open the save and quit menu, save and quit, which will skip the whole process. And now we're going to... There's supposed to be a fireball here, but uh, we call him the volcano with tums. <laughs> That's the first time I heard that one. Unfortunately, missing the, the ICS that time, but hey, five out of seven is still good. I got the ICS. Did you? Yes. I'm losing it, man. <laughs> I'm going insane. Oh, no. We're remaining six out of seven strong. Yeah. See, we can, I, I promise you, your your guides through Coal and Island can, in fact, count. They are also yeah. not blind, we're pretty sure. Their eyes are wide open as they dream. Yes. <laughs> totally. Now we're going to go finish Dungeon 2 because it's right here, right next to the windfish egg. So we might as well just do it last. Yeah. Why bother? And it's there also... is a specific way. No, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, there's a specific way I gotta kill these guys. So I hope that the Stolfos doesn't get in my way. He's gonna get in my way. Sure did get in your way. He got in my way. That's such a shame. He's gonna do it again. <laughs> ah, ah, but you went on the right side this time. Good job. Yeah. Look at that. Look at Mighty planning ahead. So another another dungeon that we just walked through. Uh, it's very satisfying to do this one because as Pecan in the chat said, yeah, this this boss is a pain. This boss sucks. Yeah, but as we know, genies are kind of frivolous and like they like to give bad wishes. So someone got some revenge on that genie. Oh, I think I missed it. Uh, yeah, missed it. Five out of seven. Five out of seven. Oh, that's a good strong fraction. Mm -hmm. I like that fraction. Yeah. I don't know what five out of seven is. Or how much it is. Well, it's five sevens. Oh. It doesn't reduce. <laughs> so, now that we're done with Dungeon 2, uh, we're gonna go straight to the end of the game. Yeah. So, there are some things about the final boss and the windfish egg. First, there's an owl here. We're gonna get rid of the owl. And then... We don't have an ocarina, but that's okay. We have bombs, and we can play on bombs instead. I love uh, the bomb instrument.
I was just in awe of the music that's going on right now. I'm very happy about the symphony he gets to listen to. Wow! You did it! You played on explosives! Ah, uh, now, there is a trading sequence that you're supposed to do to be able to get the magnifying glass to see a secret book to tell you how to get through the egg. Ah, uh, but in this version and DX, you don't really have to bother with it. Yeah, the there's a default, uh, which it's is the egg. What is the egg set to if you don't read the book? And it's left, left, up, right, right, up, left, up. Yep. Every time. So now, uh, Mighty's going to do, I presume, a bomb trigger coming in here? Oh, yeah. There it yep. is. Uh, we're going to... We don't have powder, which you need to hurt the blob, but there's a way to kill it without powder. So that's... So we did that. The first phase of the Nightmare done. Now, this is uh, Nightmare Agonin, uh, who's going to shoot out two big blue energy balls. Well, not blue in this game. But two big energy balls uh, as the first attack. Then Mighty's going to get a 50-50% chance of whether or not uh, another energy ball thrown or is a blue ball. And that's one. Technically, but I'm also manipulating it. There you go. So. I... I... Could not tell, because I don't remember what the manipulates look like in this game. Uh, unfortunately, Bow Wow is a bit lo- not Bow Wow, I'm losing it again. Uh, Shadow Moldorm is out and loose now. You can stun lock him. You- but, and- I'm not- No, go ahead, wait. Oh, I'm not good at the stun lock. I fail it much more often than I fail the Agonim Minip, which is ridiculous because the Agonim Minip is harder than the yeah. stun lock. You have to get into a specific <laughs> position and just slash your heart out uh, in order to keep him there. And that was Nightmare Ganon done. And. And my, uh, Nightmare Landmola done. And now. Landmola? Is it Landmola? I think so. Yeah, it's but it never pops up even when you're fighting it. It's just like a... Just a ball. Just a ball. Yeah, now this is uh, Deathful Death Eye. Uh, another lad with noodly arms. And we have to yeah. shoot 16 arrows into that good eyeball of his in order to kill him. Uh, arrow count can be kind of dicey because the only other thing that you can hit him with is bombs? But Mighty, yep. Mighty does it easy. Three arrows left over. Shoot out the rest of the arrows just for fun. Yep. And time is when the screen fades. So, no, that was time. And wow. that's Link's Awakening. Good job. Thank you so much, Mighty Mouth, for speedrunning Link's oh, Awakening yeah. for us. I, I know you were a little bit nervous, but I hope that after doing the whole run, you're feeling good. And uh, I know it was a lot of fun for me to watch. I hope everyone else enjoyed it. Do you have any uh, shout outs or anything you'd like to give? Uh, shout out to Nitro SR, the person who has the world record <laughs> right now. Nice. He does really well in this game, much better than me, actually. <laughs> Fun and funnily enough, Nitrous is sitting in chat and has been since like Dungeon 3 giving little up uh, deeper updates on how the game works. And we appreciate also that. just shout out to this windfish on the screen right here. It's got a punk rocker look. I love to mention that every time I see the windfish. Oh my gosh, just... that's a tattoo. You gotta get that. Oh uh, <laughs> like no no no. no. <laughs> so no, that's no, a no. lot of ink. That is a lot. <laughs> But yes, and shout outs to Phantom Matt for helping me do commentary. That was very fun. Thank you all for allowing me to come speedrun it for y'all. Of course. Well, thank you again for being here. Um, I'm going to put both 
uh, links in the chat for uh, Mighty Mouth as well as Phantom Matt. If you had a good time uh, watching the run, please make sure you follow both of them here on uh, Twitch. Uh, but that's going to be uh, it for tonight's episode of Time Capsule. It was a lot of fun, and I appreciate everyone being here. Um, I've been your host, Smooth Operative. Don't forget that our week-long marathon, Summer Games Done Quick, is coming up this Sunday, June 26th through July 3rd, and the prize submissions are still open. So uh, you can go to gamesdonequick.com for more information on that. But I hope everyone has a great rest of your day or night, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.